so concerned. Are we in? Yeah. We're in. We're, We're live. In. Do it live. We're live. Hi. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Um, that was probably a bit too much energy for a horror for a horror stream. I should have probably been like, "Hello, everyone." Um, <laughs> But uh, I'm the Law Mistress. Uh, I've got an amazing cast, and we are going to be playing some D and D Five E, um, a Crooked Roots, what Crooked Roots one shot by the incredible Cassie Mothwin. Woo! Uh, I've taken um, a lot of inspiration from uh, her What Crooked Roots one shot, but I uh, like her module. But um, I've also taken some stuff from Domains of Dread and I've taken some stuff from Cobalt Press as well. So, hopefully this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I have got a couple of advertisements that I must run through, first of all. Um, so, first of all, uh, later today at 6pm Mountain Time, number one, um, we have Frozen Depths of Our Soul, which is going to be DM'd by Dave. Uh, it's going to be a cult one shot. It sounds like it's going to be a blast. More horror, more scariness. So, if that sounds up your street, please do check it out. Um, and it's in your time zone, of course. Uh, also, um, I'm probably going to be told off by Darcy for announcing this one, but allegedly, Lancer might be happening tomorrow. Maybe. Um, Hoop says maybe yes. Darcy says, let's not. <laughs> May or may not, but uh, if it is, great. If not, also great. And congrats to Hoop as well. Um, probably everyone's been saying this, but congrats who has had a, uh, a wonderful little baby. Um, and I'm so excited. Um, adorable, cute, lovely. Um, the will other be thing. Happening tomorrow. Some form of mech based fuckery will be happening tomorrow. It may be Lancer, Thanks. it may be something else. I wonder what else it, it could first. be. You heard it here first, folks. Some sort fuckery. of fuckery. <laughs> it's will a fuckery. Be tomorrow. Um, and it will be fuckery, and that's the most important thing to take from that. That's a brand. The last thing I need to talk to you about, uh, August casting call for The Lost Caravan will be going out this weekend. Um, not just allegedly, it will be. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that. And if you want to come and play games on this stream, then feel free to apply. Um, and I think I've pretty much covered everything. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go around and everyone is just going to real quick talk about who they are, talk about what they do. If they've got anything exciting coming up, then feel free to let us know. And uh, then we'll dive right into it. So I will um, start who I can see on my screen in the order. Uh, so Holly. It's me. Okay. Uh, I am Holly. You can find me at OMG Holly D on Twitter. Um, I am sprinkled in a bit with the Lost Caravan quite a bit now these days. Um, I know that we have. I will be in another uh, one shot in, on the 30th and um, I'm very excited about that one. Um, other than that, I think I'm playing, <laughs> I am playing Lazarina Coldwater today. She is a Death Domain cleric, and I'm very excited because she is near and dear to my heart. I love her. And that's it for me. Okie dokie. Uh, Lee, you're up next. Hi, um, I'm Lee. I'm gonna be playing Star in the Sky, a tabaxi rogue today. And um, I am at Ghost Brunch on all social media except Instagram for the most part. Um, I, I'm, I'm in school to be a CLS, so I don't do a ton of streaming stuff myself. So yeah, you can just find me there. DMs are open. Nice. Next up we have Nikki. Hey, I'm Nikki, aka Beholder to No One. Uh, you can find my podcast at Beholder to No One wherever podcasts can be found, or I also produce uh, Chaotic Wonderful on Twitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, today, later today, you can find me playing Eyes of Fate as a NPC, uh, reoccurring NPC on Heroes and Hooligans. Hooligans with zeros instead of O's. And then 
<clears throat> on the 27th, you can find me at 6 p.m. on GM Hina's channel playing uh, Thirsty Sword Lesbian for a Pride Never Dies charity event. And I will be on Heroes and Hooligans again next Thursday. And then finale of season two of Shadow Run on Weave the Tail on the 29th. Very busy. Very excited. Much excited. Very busy, but uh, that's a good thing. That's cool. That's important. Uh, who have we got next? We've got Flea. Hi, everybody. I'm Flea. I see a lot of people I know in the chat, so what's up? Uh, you can find me at, at Fleet underscore Dietrich, D E T R I K. Uh, I just released Bees and Mechs, a honey heist hack that is based on Lancer, Gundam, and Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, you should go download it. It's free on itch under my name, Fleet Dietrich. It's, it's, it's a wild time. Hopefully, you'll see me play it live eventually. Uh, in terms of you know, what I'm doing, what I'm up to, I every Thursday you can find me on Girls Run These Worlds at TV at the Dark Rites, where I play the Jewish golem uh, Francis Erlitz, who is off the derech, uh, OTD baby, which means uh, I was ultra-Orthodox Jewish, now I'm not. Uh, we, we're riding sky high. Uh, you can also keep an eye out for the uh, Justice Jam bundle that will be coming out in mid-August, where all the funds will go to the Brigade Alliance, which is a, uh, oh boy, I've said this so much that it just suddenly stopped being words. The Brigade Alliance helps people who are looking for safe abortions in America leave the state and fund their travel, lodgings, food, and childcare for the kids they do currently have. So please keep an eye out for that. Follow me on Twitter. You'll find more there. And then also keep an eye out for my solo journaling game, My Mother's Kitchen, which should be coming out soon-ish, which is about the evolution of a recipe through 10 generations where you play different people with it. It's a tarot card uh, pulling system. So I have a lot going on. I'm tired. You might see more of me. I might be a DM in August so, for uh, this. So also fill out that fill out that sweet, sweet, uh, sweet, sweet casting thing and come, come hang. I'm done. <laughs> solo journaling game you say i yes. happen to quite enjoy those um My first one. Oh, thank you that was wow that was yeah you have a lot going on how are you tired are you okay <laughs> i'm on a lot of lexapro <laughs> should we just do you want to just this uh, be a, a therapy session well i know you know D, D can be a form of therapy in itself like, if we do a short rest can you let me nap <laughs> Yes, Enjoy. yes, Please. yeah. We'll we'll do like an actual short rest. It will be great. Um, I'm sure that break, no one will have any rest. problems with that mm -hmm. at all. Um, last but certainly not least, it is. I'm going to catch a mid laugh. It is Darcy. Nope. Game face. I'm ready to go. I'm a pro at this. You can't catch <laughs> ready. me. How dare? How dare? I'm fucking break you, Darcy. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. It's going to be like this. Okay, everybody. Let's welcome go. to Iron Iron TTRPG player where we try and make each other fucking break on stream, be it crying or laughing. Um, and then we have a nap. This is the greatest stream ever already. What are you talking about? Hey, I'm JC Darcy. I'm writer, content creator, producer, and GM. Uh, you can find me here on Sundays playing Lancer or other mech-related fuckery. Can't imagine what that might be. You can also find me yeah. on Girls Run These Worlds on Wednesdays. Also, mech-related fuckery. I have a thing about mechs and I didn't know it. Um, I'm here to get the pants get off of me. And I can't wait. Let's go! You do definitely have a brand. <laughs> uh, yeah, mechs, horny, and heartbreak. And it is I live for it. Horny mech fuckery. That's, that's, that's the JC Darcy brand. Then um, <laughs> the campaign what you're doing has been here. working. There's gonna be none of that here. <laughs> um, That's what you but... think. Don't you threaten me with a good time. Oh. Okay, so, uh, if there's nothing else that anyone wants to slide in, talk about, anyone's forgotten. Oh, me! <laughs> Not me! <laughs> uh, wow, I knew this was gonna happen. I was like, I'll let everyone else go first, and I'll just remember to do me at the end, and then. Uh, uh, I am Kat, otherwise known as at Lawmistress93 on pretty much all um, social media channels. Uh, most of them, most of them. Um, it's up to you to find out which ones. Uh, <laughs> Twitter is where you'll find me most. Um, I write. Uh, I do a lot of blog articles on D and D and DMing bits and bobs, and I have started to dip my toe into streaming this is in fact my first ever dming stream uh i normally well i think normally i've i've played in the past um 
So uh, I am slightly nervous and you'll be able to tell that probably as we go on, I will trip over words and all sorts. This is just a disclaimer. Um, but uh, hopefully I'll relax as we get into it. Um, I'm also going to be, uh, I'm just, you know, throwing myself right in there. I'm also going to be DMing a Mythic Odysseys campaign from next week um, on Girls Run These Worlds. Uh, it's going to be so Oh, so excited. Oh, so excited. It's, it's all ancient Greece inspired. Um, I've been really excited to do it for a long time. Um, and yeah, I'm, I, I thought, you know, I'd dip my toe in with this and, and see how I get on and see if I really need to practice for next week or if I've kind of got it down. So um, without further ado then, uh, welcome to my take on What Crooked Roots a one shot um named the sycamore croons um he's getting in everyone's getting in the zone um Spooky yeah spiders spiders so <laughs> yeah, sombra <laughs> um, so epic. you are an established Sorry. adventuring party um, what I will do first of all is I will get you all to describe your characters a little bit so we can kind of uh, have an idea of what and who we're looking at. Um, again, uh, let's go backwards this time. I'm going to start with uh, Darcy. You just like to keep us on our toes and I'm here for it. It's, I... it's how it's going to be. <laughs> but we're going to be ready for you at every step of the way. going to make this step. difficult. Uh, I'm here playing Balfia, Balfia Thaymarin. Uh, she is a furbolg. She is a good sort of seven foot tall, um, quite unassuming, the sort of surly, quiet type. When she speaks, she means it though. And I think the group have learnt that when she does speak, you listen. Um, she carries a bow, she carries some short swords, she wears a big mantled uh, cloak, and she is very often surrounded by beasts and creatures of the forest, um, and has a particular affinity for moths. Mothwin represent. Um, um, cool. Uh, let's go with Fleet next. Sure. <laughs> so, I am playing Olivier de Bold, a brave, uh, noble cavalier with his brave steed, a kobold in the search for truth, love, and justice. Uh, his diary is always on hand where he writes the poetry of the day that he thinks and will quote it at people quite frequently. Have I mentioned his noble steed is a pig with tusks uh, draped on it. Yeah. He's a good, he is here to fight in his beautiful cavalier armor, to seek truth and nobility in a world that craves it. I am so excited <laughs> to see the shenanigans that you come up with. Um, let's continue on to uh, Nikki. Uh, I'm playing Vapor, the Air Ganassi, who, instead of the bright, cheery blue that you see most Air Ganassi, she is a stormy, grayish blue, uh, kind of like a smog or smoky-filled uh, vibe going on. And she is usually wearing uh, just a pretty nice outfit that's kind of low cut in the front and you all know that she is a flirt and has flirted with each and every one of you unless you told her otherwise not to and every other person she possibly sees mostly women but she's not super picky nice nice uh on to lee hi um so i'm playing star in the sky a brown uh t like kind of Tabby, uh, Tabaxi, a rogue, and uh, he's a family man. He's adventuring to uh, send money home to his litter. Um, he And he's got a beautiful wife, Honey of Bees, and she runs a shop in his local town. So um, he, he does enjoy long naps in the sun and also cuddle piles. Y'all know I love me a cat. The, yeah. the tabaxi lives no matter what. 
<laughs> like, even if you will die, I'm going to be like, and then you've actually got away at the end. Um, cool. Yeah. And we will end on maybe the best, uh, Holly. <laughs> okay. Queen. Um, too much pressure. Just kidding. Um, I'm playing Lazarina <laughs> Coldwater. She is a um, half high elf, and uh, she. Uh, I'm just going to explain her. The way she looks is she has like like the blackest hair you've ever seen. She has the brightest green eyes you've ever seen, and she her skin color is very um, pale. I would say on the verge of looking corpse like <laughs> she um is uh carrying a sickle in one hand and a shield with uh a, a skeleton half a skeleton uh tied around it um she is a, a follower of neuralis Anilor. um he had mm -hmm. saved her yes he saved her um a long time ago when she was really young and uh, he took pity on her and she became a devout follower and ultimately um, she keeps to herself she's lived most of her life as a hermit um, from when she was very very young and uh, she's just she's super badass I'm so excited to play her again this is a character of mine that I have played before and I love her <laughs> all right uh, I just realized yeah I just realized I didn't introduce the most important part of Olivia. Oh, could you? I forgot him. His oh, noble steed. You? His name is Sir Elton, and he dreams of flight. <laughs> he wants to be a Pegasus. I forgot Pegasus. the most important part. He wants to be a Pegasus, and his name is Sir Elton. That's all. Please continue. I thought you were said... saving that as like a reveal. Yeah. No, I, I forgot. I'm sorry. You said you said about the steed, and you were like, "And his noble steed," and then you skip right over it. And I thought, "Oh, we're not going to get any mystery." Okay, okay. The mystery, the mystery. No, no one's going to know. Cards on the table. Cards on the table. He's a pig. A pig that dreams of flight. Sir Elton. A, a pig that dreams of flight. I'm sure that will not at all hurt you in any way in this Ingridget. adventure. Hurt me, mom. Um, all right dive in then. You should all be able to hear music, I hope. Mm -hmm. I'm put right. this ring light on mood lighting. Oh. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the day time. Ring light. I, can't, can't I have a dining room fun. table and an overhead. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. It's all fine. Everything's fine. You're fine. fine. Yeah. So, it has been a long day of adventuring for you all. Um, you are settling in for the night, um, the camp's been set up, you've been having a good old time, and then you retired to your individual tents. Um, and you slept. Well. But you were woken a little earlier than you expected to be. The fog rolled in very very thick and the air becomes heavy with its weight waking each of you from your rest finding your way out of your tents you desperately look around for any sight other than the choking white fog that surrounds you and calling out to each other time slows eventually though the mists dissipate as quickly as they'd come, leaving only a faint trace behind that they were ever there. Looking around, however, there is no sign of your tents, your fire, or your bedrolls. In fact, instead of the dry, rocky terrain you've been camping upon, you are greeted with damp air, rolling hills of green as far as the eye can see, and a slightly bitter wind. Sir Elton's still there? Sir Elton is with you. 
So uh, <gasps> could you imagine if you had to let you build this steed and then I just can't <laughs> and it. then you realize that you're not here. <laughs> there is no so, sign of Sir LT. <laughs> that would be the funniest thing you could do to me. <laughs> oh my god, I think that was I, such a missed opportunity. I should have done that. She would have spent the entire episode fun. finding Sir yeah. Ellen though. <laughs> Sir Ellen. I mean that would have been excellent. You can still say no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's too late. It's too late. Okay. It's too late. Sir Elton is there. Um, oh. Sir Elton is actually still asleep. Sir Elton had no knowledge that anything has gone on. Um, probably is still in the land of pigs dreaming about flight. I'm going to let him sleep because he deserves good things. We need a little scritch. And if we need to wake him up, we will. But good for now. So looking around, you are on the edge of a small hamlet. Um, it's made up of no more than a few buildings. Um, but you can see now as you're kind of getting your bearings that it's not deserted. Uh, there is a small crowd of people and they are coming out of their houses and whispering with each other at your arrival. But they're keeping their distance and just watching from afar. Oh dear. Would any of us have any idea, have heard any stories of anything like this happening before? Have any indication of knowing what on earth has just gone on? Uh, I let those of you that have maybe proficiency with history uh, roll a history check if anyone has proficiency with history. Not me. Me? But I might. Uh, drama. <gasps> I do! Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard stories? Have you heard stories? Have you heard tales of such a thing happening? That's a natural fucking 20. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Setting the bar. Okay. Wow. You know what? I it was a high it was a high DC, but uh with a natural Holy 20. Uh, what's the total? 24. 24. Okay, oh do you know what? You look around uh, you kind of look at this mist and it, it almost, it's very strange. The mist itself is like, um, it's dissipated pretty much, but it still lingers slightly. It almost like a, you know, like when you see like a cobweb or something like flying in the wind, it's kind of got that texture to it. It's almost got, it's almost like you can touch it. Um, but it is dissipating around you. Um, you know that from that, that this definitely can't be any kind of natural mist, and it seems to have taken you somewhere. And then you recall in your time reading books of brave adventurers and hearing stories regaled. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Um, <laughs> that's the exact book. You get it out of your pack, and you're like, I know what book I need for this. Like, um, seven books I travel with, and Sir Elton carries almost all of them. Uh, there was a book written by a, uh, he's not a very well-known figure, um, uh, his name is Van Richten, um, and he did write strange tales, mostly fictional, you thought, um, uh, about myths that would sweep, uh, adventurers, um, unwary travellers up into odd worlds. Um, and honestly, you really reading it had just thought it was a book of short stories uh, and not in any way something that could really have happened. You've never heard of these strange lands. Um, but specifics, you're not sure. You've just heard of mists, mists that appear and when they dissipate, people are not where they began. to speak now don't i fuck uh it's time annoyed. it's time also i've just noticed your face makeup and i'm here for it i am Thank so you. here for it Is we it got that little kobold nod there you did in the last 15 minutes like do i do this and that's why you're hearing nice makeup is because i openly asked the chat do i bother uh okay I'm so sorry to Darcy and Kat. What British nonsense is about to come out of this oh, woman's mouth? I love it. I love it when Americans try and do this. 
Just so you know, if it's bad, I will give a disadvantage for all of your roles from now on. It's meant to be <laughs> this bad. That's why I didn't do it. Because <laughs> <laughs> last night is absolutely <laughs> British. <laughs> <laughs> you always dreamed of this happening to me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've always dreamed of the mists. <laughs> Is this not a drunk induced hot fog? Fog? I just it's assume. Fog. It's quite a mist of fog. It is, it is. Have you ever heard of Van Richten? I heard of a band something, but I forgot their last name. We had a great one night stand. Oh, fascinating. You must, you must tell me in the future. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not apologizing for this. This is beautiful. Don't apologize. Uh, okay, a few things we... there. It's canon now. That was definitely Van Richten that you slept with. Um, <laughs> fantastic. On this Can I get a um, picture of what Van Richten <laughs> was he hot oh boy was was he hot? I was how drunk one. was i and was he using magic how drunk was she oh um secondly i had no idea that um brits rolled their eyes mm, um, so is- i want to i want to really quickly say olivier's name is oliver and he does not have a british accent it is a put on I see. Yeah. That's why it doesn't us, sound normal. How many of us That's, know I'm going to make that canon. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, what, has, he, has he put this uh, this accent on like the entire time that we've known each other? Or yes, yes, have you just has. woken up this morning and decided this is how I sound today? <laughs> 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 Olivier, <laughs> Oliver, Olivier, I think, developed this persona and accent when he left the Cobalt. So I, I think it. this is something he's put upon himself as like, Incredible. this is what I think a noble hero sounds like. That's that's why it doesn't sound good. I think is why I'm not gonna accept. Mm. You wouldn't believe I'm a trained fucking actor here. You would you would never <laughs> believe I've had years of Shakespeare training <laughs> with this fucking accent. God damn it. No, no, we wouldn't. No. No. <laughs> this is the closest I can get to our fucking P right now. British RP. God damn it. Oh. Okay. Anyway, that's put aside. This is the accent. We're going with it. Yeah. Right, anyway. Yes. I've heard tales of it, in terms of fog rolling in, <laughs> sweeping us away to different places. And so I think it must be a uh, calling for adventure. Hello, hello, folks, hello! And he's going to give a. Qu- I did say hello, like I'm a colonizer, Andy. We heard it. As soon as, as soon as uh, he is yelling, um, Star puts a paw over his mouth. He's like we don't know these people. We do not. No, I said go get your. So every friend is a stranger until you meet them. But no, we could get to know them. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, that was said with the energy of a dream is a wish your heart makes. Olivier <laughs> <laughs> in a fucking nutshell. <laughs> Most naive. You wish your heart makes. <laughs> Awful good oh, bullshit. Man. Oh man. So this character is it. No. I hoped it would be. None more. This is your show Fuck. fleet. We're just along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a team. So your paw goes over his mouth and he muffles and kind of pulls it down and says that to you, but he he does at least respect yeah. that you all don't want to, he like will respect the group's opinion. He doesn't storm off. He will often, but only with only if no one stops him. So you've stopped him and he says okay. him on the head. I give you a little cuddle. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you, thank you. The rolls yes. <laughs> the rolling of the eyes. I'm questioning it is, it my really why I was actually while, while all these shenanigans are going on. Um, this group that has assembled. I mean, it's a it's a pretty small hamlet. There's not there's not many people that live here. It's literally like a few buildings. Um, and they it, it seems like the whole po- population has come out um, and are just sort of quietly standing, hands clasped, kind of just gazing at you. They're whispering to each other, but there isn't really much movement. No one seems to move forward to greet you or anything like that. Um, they're just watching and waiting. 
And whenever one of you catches one of their eyes, they just smile. Every time nope. Olivier catches one of their eyes, he smiles back so big with all of his heart. They just continue to smile. If they, if they look at he Baker, smiles back. She Go swings. Ahead. <laughs> uh, Sleep our way through the fog. I'm avoiding all eye contact. Laz is really used to people looking at her. She doesn't look. She, she kind of looks a little otherworldly, a little, little dead, and so she doesn't really pay attention to it at all. She's kind of making sure that all of her friends are present and checking to make sure like she has everything that's hers. Definitely oh, trying right. to shake these that. people up. I'm trying to get a measure of what is going on. Like I'm the sort of person to land in a new environment and I'm immediately scoping it out. Mm -hmm. And I can I pull a class feature and immediately drop a um Oh, I forget what it's called. I'm, I'm looking for fey and fiends and undead and bullshit, essentially. Oh, you're looking for the ranger sense, the um, primordial awareness. Prime or that's something. the one. Primeval awareness, yeah. Primeval awareness. But I've been doing this too. Um, what is it? Uh, what what particular creatures does it? You indicate? are gonna. A, a regular DM would tell me you are going to obfuscate whether I can sense any aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, or undead within one mile. Within one mile. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I think I fall under. You kind of technically <laughs> take a moment to gaze around your surroundings. Um, obviously you can see the hamlet, this group of people. Um, as you kind of gaze around you, um, you're kind of on a uh, on a path, um, and directly opposite the hamlet, so in the opposite direction to where you guys are. There's a sort of what looks to be some kind of cliff tops um, leading into a forest. Um, and you kind of take a moment to really just look around. And as you look towards the village with the people, um, quite a crowd of them has assembled at this point. Um, they mostly seem okay, but there is a pinprick of something. Something there strikes you as not human. And then, and then it's gone. Was it centered on the people or just on the village in general? Within that crowd. Right, I hate that. Um, there's something very untoward here. Let's be wary. Do you want me to go around, search? I can be back in a few minutes. I'm looking at Olivier. <laughs> the only thing untoward here is your behavior towards their welcoming smiles. Everyone is so damn grim. No, Olivier, no. When you say that, all of them in, uni in unison no. all raise their hand. Good morning. I hate it. <laughs> they must have practiced that for so long. Good morning. <laughs> Good morrow! Good morrow, Olivier. sweet Olivier. You, you know, I I teach my, my my children, my little, about stranger danger. This is textbook. Mm -hmm. I suddenly am I... not interested in any of them, just strange. Oh, 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 <laughs> really? That, case... that was very off-putting. Like, oh. twins, maybe, if they talked at the same time, then I could make an exception. But, like, all of them? That's just... My twins don't do that. I have like short. 12 of them. So my twins <laughs> don't do that. I have, I have uh, start in the sky, I have a follow-up question. Are they all twins with each other or just 12 sets of twins? Do you elaborate on that for us, please? Can you explain? <laughs> it's like... I mean, them, I love it. Love it when you count on your there's, paws. There's 12 <laughs> of them total. Oh, Four of them twins. are twins. Yes. Does that mean that there's two sets of twins, or that two there's two sets th of twins? Okay. okay. Glad we glad we clarified. And then I have triplets. Okay. okay. Uh, actually, in that case, uh, <laughs> Vapor, if you have 
you have a sense of things, and uh, Star in the Sky, you have a sense of things that this is not quite right, and and, and in Belfield, you have a sense of things that are quite right. Lazarina, I cannot tell what you are feeling right now. Your face is always is impenetrable to me. But I must say, I will bow to whatever you wish to do. I, I say we, we don't gain anything by 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 ignoring them or, or treating them hos- with hostility. We would give up the game then, quite. I think we can approach, but I think we do so with care and quiet, perhaps, if you can manage. All right, you all well, know I'm a bit shy. I'm going to go around the back. I <laughs> think that's smart. <laughs> I go, I, I will uh, break away and go, like, if there's like a, if it's like a clearing, I'll go around, just like through the tree line. I guess mm-hmm. stealthing, if possible. I will use presentation to like shine. You're facing directly into kind of like the entrance of, uh, sorry, um, into the entrance of the uh, hamlet. Um, You could probably sneak a little around a couple of the buildings um, and and keep a distance that way. Um, Yeah, yeah, go on, uh, Vapor. I was just saying, I'm probably used to Star sneaking off, so um, whenever Star needs to like get out of the way, Vapor will purposely cast Prejudication to like just make herself sparkle so people pay attention to her while Star in the Sky can just stealth off without being Wonderful. <laughs> I love that. What, love a, what that. a good team what? we make. <laughs> Definitely not because she wants to be at the center of attention. Not at all. I think it must be very difficult on Vapor to be next to Olivier who's just loud. She wants to be the center of attention. Uh, they have friends though but I feel like there's if she wants me to set her attention there's always a little like stop being so loud um Olivia would okay. like to wake up Sir Elton and ride ride the steed in ride the steed nobly. of course I have a poem just for this occasion and I read it aloud Sir I'm... Elton um kind of sh- shakes himself awake looks around it's the fucking does not seem feeling. at all weirded out by the fact that you're in a completely different place now this is part of the course for south you are a group of adventurers this is you know sir elton's seen some shit okay um so (laughs) he just wakes up looks around gives you that look of like okay to battle and uh (laughs) uh, get like hunkers down ready to be uh (laughs) mounted (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think like, it would have been fine if I hadn't laughed as I said it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it would have been fine. I could do that. I turn on the this on yourself. I, I, I do not. I did. I did. I did, I did bring this on myself. But um, I don't regret I think, it. So. I think every book that Olivier ever reads oh, is also read. Nice. Th- they read it together. Like Olivier reads aloud at night to Sir Elton, and he oh, like he won't read oh. something first without reading it to Sir Elton, so they can experience it together. Why? Not um, wholesome content in my folk horror one shot. <laughs> I, I, Star will always apart. listen, but you don't know that. Just so you know. <laughs> I think. Hop on. I think no poetry for now, Olivier. Maybe let's. Not now. Maybe later. Oh, <laughs> Olivier can whisper the poem to Sir Elton. As they write. I mean, Belfi is very like gentle with it. Like I know what the poetry means to you. <laughs> this is this is this is a special occasion in a different way. Maybe one that does not need to be commemorated with poetry. I right, see. So you're walking towards the crowd. We had a, a trumpeter. I would hide any trumpet that you had, Olivier. Right now, let's just be calm and quiet. Takes the trumpet and puts it away. <laughs> Slowly has taken it out. All right. <laughs> Okay, just go in and now. Go in and. All right, and as you head towards them, uh, they kind of uh, fall apart, and an elderly uh, lady um, starts to make her way towards you. She's kind of hunched a little. Um, she's using a kind of like a, a walking aid, um, and she uh, and she kind of waves her hand in greeting, and she's like. Greetings, adventurers. You must have questions. Yes, we have lots of questions, actually. A little lost, are we? 
Uh, not by our own doing, I don't think. Mm. Tis the way. Um, the so, where oh, are we? Right. I'm so sorry. You're okay. You're here now. But where is here? Here is here, silly. <laughs> oh no, okay. <laughs> um, it could be worse. You could be there. Lost in Wonderland again? I know, right? Uh, we back? Okay. <laughs> we sanity <laughs> check. <laughs> um, I'm actually secretly really gutted that I missed Wonderland Wing, so that we, so this is my mm -hmm. <laughs> your Wonderland Wing. Olivier dismounts <clears throat> and kneels before this woman and proffers his hand to her. No, no. Belfia just head in hands. Oh, you're polite. I like polite. We are here or there. It is an honor to meet you. Myself and my adventuring party are at your disposal, fair maiden. And she does if if they this only, woman they gives gives her his hand, he will kiss it with her permission. But if she's like doesn't, he will simply like gesture. Boy, She'll like look at you awkwardly um, as you offer for a hand, and then she'll just like pat your head and then um, looks look so back up happy. at the rest. He's just like this is all he wanted was just like someone. He he's like mom, mom, mom. <laughs> mom. He he, is, he <laughs> nods and he mounts back onto his steed, but he do you say to... mom? No, he doesn't say mom. <laughs> I was bleeding a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> he's going to mount back up, but Olivier believes that anything, any, any interaction should begin with politeness because often it serves, I feel like that serves them well. It at least puts people off guard and less likely to be suspicious or rude. Like, I think it's, a, it's what he believes, but it's also a tactic. Mm -mm. He does it purposefully. Uh, Vader, did you, I don't know if you said something a little bit earlier. Did you have something you wanted to do? Yes. Um, I was going to, but then Eliza Arena was talking, so it was fine. Somebody already <laughs> has started talking to the person. You could um, to. If I'm by any houses can i if there's like any open windows can i take a peek inside um are you trying to do it quietly yeah <laughs> roll a stealth check for me i would love to um, all right roll perception as well okay perception per mm -hmm. yeah. Oh no. Ooh, love that for me. All right. Um <laughs> but I'll still try and be stealthy. Wow, that's a 1 and a 2, and my a friends. Two. Oh, <laughs> okay. All if right. So, um Hmm. <laughs> uh So, you attempt to the windows they are there, but they're a little higher um, than you would expect. Um, so you kind of uh, grab a nearby uh, bucket, quietly turn it, uh, and climb on. Um, and you can just about peer in. Um, the room is dark. It does oddly dark, actually, because it is quite a bright day uh, outside. Um, but there just seems to be this kind of floating dust inside um, that really makes it quite difficult and the, the windows are quite smeared and dirty so it's really hard to see um, you can make up vague shadows they look like maybe a, a table uh, a bed uh, some kind of vague humanoid shape um, it moves and it does dots. move uh, it does Ooh. move and mm. it darts what you would presume to be a bed, it darts underneath it. Uh, oh! As you kind of slightly lose your balance um, and the bucket makes a slight noise. Um, and at that, um, 
uh, this elderly lady that you've been speaking to turns towards uh, <laughs> the houses, roughly looking at where uh, you all know a Star in the Sky to be. And w- won't you come out, dear? I would so love to meet all of you. Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh, I don't like this. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, like a a very a guilty cat, he trudges out. It's like, Dang Upset, it. you must. I tried really hard, questions. guys. I'm sorry. Uh, it happens. It happens. Um, you must have many questions, and um, I didn't say I had answers to them all, but I have some. My name is uh, Lorinda, but you may call me Mother if you prefer. I, I do not. I we I have a mom <laughs> already. Sorry. Olivier absolutely <laughs> calls her Mother. <laughs> Olivier a thousand percent calls her. That's why you asked me if I said Mom out loud. Yeah. There was going to be such a reaction if you said Mom out loud. <laughs> Um, I was like were... waiting for it. I was like, please say you said it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't even pick up on that. I should have just said yes. Oh, but mother. Olivier will call her mother. So okay, is it her name again? Her name again? What's her name again? Uh, name? Lorinda. Lorinda. Okay. Uh, L O R I N D A, if you're making notes. I am. That's a good idea. A note taker. <laughs> A fellow note taker. We're few and far between in the D and D community, but we are the staple. The staple. <laughs> okay. Um. So, uh, she kind of looks around at you all, and she says, "You're the sixth, sixth lot of adventurers to arrive in the last few weeks." Where are the other ones? If you have to ask. And they went off. There, I presume. I would really like a map to see where here and there are. That would be fantastic. And I so wanna... that I can understand. Yes, yeah, so I would like <laughs> oh, to roll I would like to roll an charming. insight on her to see like if she is telling us everything she knows, like or if she's being trite on purpose. I mean I'm sure she is, but roll uh roll insight, yeah. an 18 18 yes you don't sense a lie but you do sense you see a little twinkle in her eye um she is uh she is having fun right now um (laughs) there is something that is not quite uh it's not a lie necessarily, but it's, it's it's something just not quite right. She could be withholding things or bending truths, perhaps. Okay. Um, did Vapor get a map? She kind of she kind of laughs at um, Vapor's requests and says, "You're charming. It's but a figure of speech." I understand that, but just, I don't know. I I wake up in a lot of strange places, honestly, and this is probably by far top five. <laughs> what are the other four, Vapor? <laughs> well, there was the <laughs> dragon's den. I'm also interested in that. There was the dragon's den. There was the One. lich the lich quarters. I don't understand I what that. happened there. There wasn't a lich there, so I'm not sure 100%. My, my! Aren't you a talkative bunch? Tend to be, yes. Yes. Some of us. <laughs> That's just answering the question. It's very rude to interrupt, honestly, but just whatever. It's fine. You're in charge. I never claim to be polite either. And she's kind of really looking at you specifically before she turns and looks at you all again with a smile on her face. I think she likes me. What answers do you have then? If you'd like to give us them? Answer me, no. I rule, uh, I look after this village, but I do know where you could find answers and perhaps help us out at the same time. If you are up for a, uh, 
And she kind of glances at um, Olivier as she says this. Chivalrous deed of sorts. Got his fucking number. He perks up. His smile is ear to ear. But, so he's smiling and excited. However, he does remember the fog. Ah. As much as I would love to be of service to you, um, mother, if I may. Oh, she mother. audibly beams when you say mother. Like, it's a, a really genuine smile that she gives when you okay, say it. it. Yep. And I think it's also, like, a genuine thing of, like, yeah, she feels maternal because she did, like, ruffle his little blonde hair. And as, yeah, as you so say so mother wrong. as well, all the villagers behind her, they all go, mother, mother. I like that. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, I, I Lazarina is not a fan of this. Nope. <laughs> like, <laughs> Lazarina not. looks spooky herself, but this is yeah, like this is knows. this is next level. Like she's like, yeah, no, one thing to yeah, look at, I another thing nestled. to be scary. <laughs> Olivier seems a little put off. Like this is so far his like big dream. I think he's dreamed and like written. So his diary is not really. It's more of like an ideation, like a Pinterest board of like I want this to come true. And he's written his own adventures in his diary. And one of them is like, and this matches it pretty completely of like, you are swept away and an older woman comes and asks you for help. And it's it matches up so well mm. that it's making him suspicious. Cause I don't think he's not stupid. So he, mm. he's excitable, but he's not stupid. And so he thinks for it, on it for a moment. This is clearly a role that she's putting on him and she's identified a role and he loves stories. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to say shit to the group while she's here so he looks up and he says it would be it would be an honor milady um i just reach down like a massive furry hand and just kind of hold back this tiny little kobold and just say <laughs> our rates are very fair what is it you need <laughs> money is involved right oh well <laughs> this is every it's topic. something for something really I will tell you the way to seek the answers of how to get out of here. And it's more just a favor. You require the singing tree. What is that? It holds a lot of power here in this land. And it's an oracle of sorts. It will know how to send you out. And all I require is... And she takes from the ground a basket. Um, and in... It's kind of wrapped, so you can't see what's inside. Um, I just require you to hang the fruit. It's a tradition of sorts that we have here. An offering. I like that fruit on the singing tree and it gives you answers I normally make the journey myself but I'm getting old and well I don't need answers anymore lady if I may my lady if I may this voice is changing if I may <laughs> roll your eyes roll your eyes that'll get you back mother please if I mother if I may <laughs> You gotta remind me to roll my heart, so I'm gonna have a hard time. I need to like write it on a sticky note and put it somewhere. This have anything to do with the magical fog that sweeps people away? And do you know a man by the name of Van Richten? What is your passive insight, everyone? Oh shit, ruin. Is that ten? Just just ten plus your insight and base. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And baby. The 15. 15. I think mine is 17. Nice. Is it 17? Yep. I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, so she says, Van Richten? No. And, uh, well, it gets very foggy here. But I know nothing about mist sweeping people away. But, 
for the adventurers that came before, they said much the same. As she's saying this, though, and as she said Van Richten no, um, Lazarina would notice there was a lie in what she just said. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep that to myself until we leave. There's a lot I think that we want to say to each other outside of earshot of these people, mm-hmm. because we've been journey- journeying so well together. Do we kind of notice like each other's small things of like, I guess? I think you. I think you would. Um, to an extent, you you may yeah. notice. Um, you may notice if there's an audible or a, a very obvious reaction. Um, very tiny small things I would ask you to be kind of looking for them just you're in a really strange place and you're probably got your guard up in terms of these people Um, so unless you say oh I'm specifically looking to see if someone is reacting or whatever I would it's it's more like if we are like we need to talk I think like or like oh there's a conversation that needs to be had not necessarily oh like a shared like a yeah like we have things to share with each other not like I not like, <laughs> oh, she's lying, but more like we have things to say because Olivia is giving off that vibe but is not showing it. But I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but Marina can't would, hide I, her face, so you definitely know she's got something to tell you. But <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, you would kind of. I mean, this place is giving off such a vibe that you would probably all know that you want to, like, as soon as you're out of earshot, these people be yeah, like, okay. I have so much to tell you. I noticed this, 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 and this. This is kind of part of the course for you. You tend to in your adventuring you'll have a conversation with someone and then when you're out of earshot you'll all be like i noticed this and i noticed this so uh, you know that that's gonna kind of happen um but um yeah and so and yeah and she kind of lifts the basket and she goes please it's it's just a minor thing you just need to um and she pulls uh some rope if you have none of this i have some you just need to hang the fruit on the tree and it will give you the answers you require. It's not failed me yet. Sorry, the only thing in the basket is rope? No, so she gives you rope and she gives you a basket right. that you can't the see fruit. inside. Right. The but that she's telling fruit. you that there's fruit inside. Got you, got you, got you. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Thanks. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I had a quick question. Yeah. Who was yeah. the person hiding? In the house. Oh, I, oh, double take. She kind of um, gives you a really um, long look and she goes, It's just the children. Uh, why? <laughs> we children keep them inside for safekeeping when strangers are about. We don't know your intentions. Sure, who doesn't do that? <laughs> That's a perfectly right. normal thing, is it not? She no. looks at all of you. <laughs> Uh, he, he's like, yeah, that, that, and that all sounds of the about right. Behind her go, perfectly normal, perfectly normal, perfectly normal. <laughs> That's all not perfectly normal. Just, just. Well, that part wasn't, but that keeping him inside, that, that is. <laughs> um, I think Olivier will give Sir Elton a little kick, and Sir Elton will delicately take the handle of the basket. So Sir Elton is now carrying the fruit basket. Got it. Um, got it. That's and... why you got a mount. <laughs> None of us have to carry the damn thing now. <laughs> Not a mount. That's a pack animal. <laughs> it's only if Sir Elton wants to, because if Sir Elton's like, no, uh, he will carry it himself because they are equal par- adventuring partners in this. They are best so, friends. Sir Elton um, is happy to take the basket. Um, very happy, um, in fact, um, and eat many of gets it. himself. Um, yeah, you can see uh, as he sits down, he kind of <laughs> and just kind of glances down and then looks back at you like mm. <laughs> um, and then she takes over she goes, oh thank you, thank you kindly, thank you we do love polite, heroic people here can I? you'd be doing us a huge favour and yourselves as well I really Favorite. wish you luck in getting the answers that you need. Can Vapor, like, look around and either investigate or, like, just sense... I want to 
use Arcana or something just to see if like magic is at play here. I know I can't like tell percep exactly, but mm -hmm. I know magic. And even if she can talk to her patron and be like, hey, like, what do you know what's happening here? I'm confused. Okay. Uh, yeah, make it make it like a general Arcana check and just see. A whole 11. A whole, a whole, a whole ass 11, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, you kind of look around, you know what to kind of look for, and um, you've been taught quite well um, by your patron, and you can feel uh, their presence um, around you as they too are kind of having a, um, helping you to scan properly. You're looking for anything with runes, you're looking for any strange markings or anything. Um, there's a lot of strange things about this place. Um, you don't really see anything that sticks out as distinctly magical. You kind of eye the basket to see if someone has kind of inscribed some kind of runes or if there's anything that would tell you there's something importantly magical in here. Um, not necessarily, no. Okay. So just very weird. Very odd. These people are strange. Um, and we got that. I, yeah, I would say as well that maybe you would look for some kind of like mind, con something that would indicate mind control. Or yeah, that's kind of what like I was that. thinking. It was like enchantment and, and spells. And that, like that, that, I guess, if I think if I was thinking in vapor, what she would probably be looking for. Um, no which makes it all the more bizarre you see nothing that indicates that these people are um, under any kind of uh, mind controlling spells or charms as she such just... they seem perfectly happy she mutters to herself uh, slash to her patron nobody is this happy all the time mm -hmm. especially oh. me when we haven't had anything to eat because we were just swept away so I was wondering, maybe perhaps oh. go and use one of your kitchens, make something. No good. need, no need. We've packed things for you, if you'd like a breakfast now. Um, and she, they, they kind of. Uh, no, I'm not eating that. Oh, no way. Uh, Wait, I'll starve. It's fine. A couple of people disappear off into their oh. houses. Um, they're gone for a little, including one of them goes into the house that you were spying in, actually. Um, I'm looking at that one. Turn. Um, roll a perception check for me. I would love to. Okay. Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. That is good. Uh, oh, yeah, Ooh. that is good. Um, okay. as they open the door to come back out, um, you notice a small child's face peering out at you. Um, upon seeing you, Gurry's back inside again. Um, with a 23 as well, I will give you the child looks kind of, um, they were quite dirty. Um, they had red stains around their mouth. Um, and, um, the clothing they were wearing is quite torn and ragged, but not not necessarily neglected or malnourished or anything like that. It just looked like they lead a very uh, sort of simple, slightly impoverished life, perhaps. Do the adults look like that? <laughs> yeah, looking around, they okay. all look like they're very you know, like basic, plain clothing. It's got a lot of like tears and things like that, but it's not. Um, none of them seem to mind. They all seem really happy. Mm -hmm. A father, though, does um, does this child <laughs> father does check? This, does this child look nervous? Father check. They Daddy only check. looked nervous upon Pet seeing Daddy. you. Okay, cool. Them daddies. They Daddy. were kind of almost cling, clinging to their to their you guess guardian or parents' leg. Um, okay. and the mo the moment that they saw you, they scurry back inside and eyes wide. Gotcha. And, yeah. Nothing that would ring any alarm bells, parenting alarm bells, currently. Cool. Yes. I have a question. Please. Um, Olivier 
is going to not drop the 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 noble chivalrous that's his that's his every day but he will ask um mother and the group uh no i'm doing it mother if i may mother may i uh how long how long has all right this julie andrews lived? <laughs> how long has this been here excuse me he's rolled his r's god i have to write that down how long has this been here how long have you all lived in the village if i may ask Oh, you know, we don't get asked that very often. A long time. Yes, well, quite Can't rightly remember you. how long. I am very old. Um, uh, if I may, m'lady. Oh, the poetry. Like the there. waves. Oh, I don't need, I don't need the book for this one. As like the waves. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I remember this. You say it. Please let this be in character, please. I used to fucking know this. I used to memorize. I have memorized. I'm just trying to remember the poem. It gets a little bit of stage fright. Like the waves make towards the pebbled shore, so do our minutes hasten to their end. Each changing places with that which goes before, in sequent toil all, forwards do contend. Naivety once, in the main of light, crawls to maturity, wherewith being grounded. Crooked eclipses against his glory fight, and time that made doth now his gift confound. And doth transfix the flourish set on you. You can talk over me, truly. I will speak a little quieter, but like, this is meant to talk over. <laughs> He says we'll be right back. Really, I'm fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> it is crooked eclipses against his glory, fight in time that made other things come down. He like repeats it a little bit. He says yes. we'll be right back. Don't worry. Thank you for your hospitality and your I help. They ride away. Like he's still shouting it back behind him. And it's as um, just as you uh, we go. So, just a note that um before you leave they will give you like um very small uh little bits of food um to take um just rations really uh and the basket is kind of it, it's relatively big but it's not a problem for um uh for good serotonin um noble steed that he is um, he kind of just takes it Occasionally, he's kind of drops it and sniffles at it, and and you think we're gonna eat it. Um, and as you're kind of walking away, um, they'll say, "Follow the path," and they kind of all repeat, "Follow the path, follow the path." Um, they say, "Don't worry, we'll leave an egg in your stead, an egg in your stead, an egg in your stead." Sorry, what the fuck did they call me? <laughs> <laughs> no, they said they would leave an egg in your stead. <laughs> it was a trans joke. I hate I mean, everything egg? about that. Um, and then, mind the wandering grove, the wandering grove, mind the wandering grove. Okay. And remember, and all of the minions, and no, fruit is not for you. And they smile. No. Um, it's for the tree, and you shall find your answers. I swear I was gonna eat one. What is Goodbye. Goodbye. That's your plan. Goodbye. 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 And then they all turn and file back into their houses, leaving only Mother Lorinda watching you make your way. Eat it. So the day is young as you make your way along the path. Um, you're heading sort of towards this forest. Um, which possibly contains the key to your escape from this rather strange place. Um, as you walk, you are welcome to discuss if there's anything that you feel like, yeah, you know what, there's, you know, I've been meaning to say this because I'm sure that you'll have some things you want to say. Um, feel free. Can we just, can we just talk about how strange that was and also, like, none of them were attractive and that's very weird. It's quite strange for you, Vapor. I know it's that quite strange. I was hoping at least I have a mother, but no. <laughs> at least mother. <laughs> at least mother. I was going to think about mommies. She didn't say, but she didn't respond. It's upsetting. Oh 
It's a point. There was a kid I saw in the house. Huh. It was yeah. just a kid. Um, she is not telling the whole truth. She is lying to some degree. Regards in regards to what? I may ask. All of it. Okay. Was it uh, that she didn't know anything, or that she did know something, or that she... It, I don't know. It was that she did know something. Correct. Yes. <laughs> I had to think about it, yes. Was yeah, so she was kind it? of withholding information, she just, yeah. or she seemed to be... She seemed to know more than she was letting on. Um, and also, um, you know, I believe it was you that noticed... Um, there was some reaction to the name Van Richten, um, a glimmer of recognition, but she specifically said, I don't know who that is. I share that with you guys, obviously. It's Van Richten. None of us know who Van Richten is apart from Olivier. <laughs> Van Richten? I think that yeah. was the person I slept with, honestly. Now oh. that I think about it. Which one? It'd be very... At that, I, I, yeah, um... It was at a bar. That doesn't narrow it down at all. It was. You all weren't there. We were on vacation. I don't think vacation. Vacation. I was on vacation. I left you. It was the two weeks that I I, I oh. left and then came back suddenly. Oh, and you're like, where were you? It's like, don't ask questions. You don't want to know the answers to. I always want to know how your day is going, baby. I'll do it always rather talk to the animals than the other people and so I'm gonna squat down next to Sir Elton and just say what is it boy? What What have you got in there? <laughs> he seems to react to the f the fruit, whatever it is so can I get a reading he, of he it? He does he, he seems to he seems to be um, he's fine carrying the basket you can kind of measure if you want how heavy it is and it's a perfectly suitable weight for him to be carrying he's not but he seems uncomfortable in the sense that he keeps putting it down and he keeps sniffing at it like he's intrigued um even though the answer has already been you know no we're not eating what's in there we're just carrying it that's normally enough for sir elton um but occasionally he it, he does seem really perplexed by the smell um you're quite close to the basket currently. You can't really smell anything um, particularly strong. Um, if you want to make a perception check to... Debating yeah. how strongly worded her warning of the fruit is not for you is, does that mean don't look at it? Yeah. Do I not open Pandora's box? Can we're I have... we're cutting it open. I flip, a, I flip the hilt of a dagger to you. I've got to cut my own weapons. Thank you, Olivier. Um, this is exercising caution. I know I've tried to model this for you a few times, but here we go again. Caution. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a smell of it. Let's do a little bit of check checking of it before we rip it open. Don't look so heartbroken. We'll get there eventually. Didn't realize I was such a disappointment to you. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Olivier, you can never be a disappointment. I feel quite patronized right now. I understand caution, but I thought, you know, I don't use my dagger quite as much as you do. I'll put it back. I, I have my own uh, research to attend to. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not crying. And he's going to open the, the book, and he's all, while you do the fruit, and this can happen after, he's going to look for more in Van Richten's now that he knows that Van Richten is suspicious. Here is unmoved by your theatrics, such as they are. Oh, that that was real. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's real. Um, um, I'm conversing with a pig now, right? Leave me to it. Uh, <laughs> I believe yes. I would like to do so. I, I I will not open it yet, but I will do okay. what perception I can. I'm scared of are you, the basket cat. Are you, are you open? So you're not opening the basket. You're just looking at the basket itself right now. Yeah, I like. If I can get closer, that's it. Like, put it up to my nose and have a sniff. If I can get any sort of sure. sense of what might be inside, that'd be great. Oh. Uh, yeah, roll an investigation. Can oh, I? okay, I'll do that. Yeah, that's great. I'll do that. Ignore See, that roll. If it's not just trapped. Well. Oh my Maybe. gosh. <laughs> can I help with investigate or do an investigation check as well? If I. If you want to assist, yeah, absolutely. Roll with advantage. 
Um, I'm sure Darcy would be really thankful because I just saw what Darcy rolled. Yeah, yeah. Um, Two nights yeah. in a row. I'll roll it one more time. If it's another yeah. nine, I'm gonna shit. Thank God. <laughs> It would have been great. Oh, no was. shitting. I'd have been like, oh yeah, did I not tell you I switched it on so you only roll nines? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so with advantage, 16. So with the two of you kind of looking, really digging deep into if there's any kind of oddity about this basket. Um, and the answer is no. It just seems like a normal basket. Um, there's no magic on the basket. What? I know that much. What? Uh, there's nothing on it that suggests any kind of uh, enchantment. Um, nothing seems to be wrong with the basket, no. Okay. And it's just a, it's, it's like yeah, that standard like picnic looking basket, like wicker. It's got the blanket inside, and the blanket seems to be covering something. Um, Does it make any kind of noise when I like shake it? Is it breathing? Well, other than the sound of something rolling around a little bit, but... Okay. 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 Open it. Whatever's inside the blanket has been wrapped up quite nicely, so it looks um kind of like a... Um, o- ovoid. Um, uh, maybe, like, melon size? Oh, cool, cool, cool. I'll... Knowing that, I'm feeling slightly better about it now. I'll just ask mm-hmm. for Elton. Does it smell good? Do you want to eat it? So Ralton looks up at you and there's a tiny drip of drool. That could indicate many things. It could be anything. (laughs) And he kind of snuffles in the way that you know to mean a very enthusiastic yes. So Ralton would love to eat what's in this basket. Right. Um, But Ralton is a good pig. He's a good boy. We like him very much. No, you're not so going Sir to eat it. Will well. not. Um, that I would say is not necessarily unusual. So the only thing that's unusual is the fact that he keeps investigating it. Sir Elton is a hungry pig, um, and does like to eat most things, even slightly unusual things sometimes. Um, but in this particular instance, the only thing that kind of struck you with his behaviour, knowing him as well as you do, is that he kind of kept going back to it. Right. Olivier, have you fed this pig? He has missed his breakfast, you know. I think he could do with something. Yes, I was hoping once we got farther away, I would be able to feed him because I do not... I did not want the awkward situation of uh, trying to feed my sweet boy and then having them offer food to him. Very, very smart. Well done. That was exercising caution, and I approve. That was like He's so happy. Oh my god. So happy to be he's so happy to be him. praised. <laughs> so he just wants to be he he hates it when people are disappointed. He's just happy. Mommy King, Daddy King, oh. Praise King. We're learning all about Olivier. Yeah, love it. No kink love shaming it. here. He's so happy. But he does um pick out a little like thing that he feeds to Sir Elton and he's going to swap the basket out and give him food because he does need to eat. And, yeah. Um, if he's so, going so to you're reaching it. in for some like some rations, but it's not the rations that they gave us. Although I will say, Cat, my yeah. intention for Olivier is that he will nibble on it experimentally okay. to see. He will eat it to see if it changes. He's he knows about Fey things. He knows about food, and he knows like not to do that. But he also will do it because that's the I more know. interesting choice for me. So as a so. <laughs> So as you guys get out your own rations for um, Sir Elton, so the ones he kind of brought along with you, and you kind of reach into your bag, you pick them out, and oh, it seems to have gone a little bit mouldy. Uh, okay. Put that aside, uh, you reach into your bag, and ah, all of your rations that you know that you purchased not recently you're a prepared adventuring group okay you keep on top of your rations and your uh, water and everything like that the, the rations are disintegrating it's like they are really old it's like they've been around for years and they just fall through your hands um moldy disgusting and sir even sir elton is visibly disgusted by the look of them um, you for giving me an opening for a reason to try it for my pig. Um, that's exactly what I needed. And so looking at that, 
Olivier looks at the group. Need to feed him. Takes <sighs> out the ration. Is the ration they gave us okay? What, are you eating it? It, it doesn't look like it's moldy or anything. Nope, it looks absolutely fine. I think I'm going to tear it's off a small piece. piece of cake. cake. You didn't say it was cake. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's cake? <laughs> Elton, mm. Sir Elton can't eat that, he's a pig! <laughs> He'll die! Ma magical cake. Was... Okay. Pigs will eat anything. Okay. Pigs will literally eat any goddamn thing. It will eat uh -huh. anything, but it's not its not good for him. He has a delicate digestive tract. He's a hot girl <laughs> with IBS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's cake. Uh, okay, so I'm then there are pieces pig. of cake and there are pieces of suitable pig food that they have actually packed and given to you. Um, That's convenient. I don't know enough about pigs to tell you what. <laughs> to tell you it's what probably, it would be. Honestly, it can be anything. I, a cake is fine if it's like a magical cake. I think Sir Alton's fine. So, in that case, to make it easier, he takes off a little piece of cake and like smells it, looks inside, and eats a little bit of it to make sure it's okay. Is a, basically a poison tester for Sir Alton because he's an animal and he <laughs> does need to eat. Do eat it. I eat some. Hand on my sword rather than right? put Olivier out of his misery if need be. <laughs> <laughs> um. You put the cake Hope you try in your, more than your, that in your mouth, and you literally just like, and eat it quickly. Hopefully, nothing will happen. Swallow. Birds are singing. Everything seems fine. You don't have any pain. You can still feel everything. Nothing happened so far. Sir Elton, can you can you hold off on eating for maybe an hour to make sure that this is okay? He's going. Huh? That was me trying to, <laughs> trying to do this bad pig noise and failing miserably. <laughs> 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 it just sounded like a sad cat noise. <laughs> Very familiar. Um, while all um, this is happening, can I uh, can Vapor send out her familiar to just yeah. like scout around? Sure. Um, she has a, so technically for the familiars, it's a raven, but flavor wise, I would like it to be a swift, which is associated with air more. Mm -hmm. um, so she sends off her little blue swift to just scout the, to see if we were being followed, to see if anybody's like sneaking up on us. And she'll look through her, through its eyes because we're standing mm -hmm. still right now. Okay. Um, so... Um, make a uh, make a perception check with the um, Raven Swift stats. Nope. Oh no. I got a three. Oh. Um, He's still distracted by so... not seeing any hot people in the in the place. She's just can't get that off her mind. <laughs> you uh, yeah, your Swift uh. You become a bit distracted watching um, uh, Olivier attempt to eat some potentially poisoned, terrible cake. Um, and as you're watching, um, you kind of almost offhand we say, uh, look around um, and forget until the last second to actually go into your ri oh, <laughs> into oh, your shit. swift eyes. Oh yes! Um, so you kind of join uh, and, and see through your Swift's eyes just as they're coming back to land on your uh, shoulder um, you see countryside um, behind you there's a hamlet um, up ahead there seems to be some cliffs uh, the path is going to take up an uphill um, and you're quite approaching that quite quickly now um, an uphill climb and then into forest but you can't really see anything beyond that i was totally paying attention completely and utterly and then there are cliffs up ahead and then more trees um but that's all i saw i was hoping i would see more if we're being followed they're very sneaky <laughs> i would have absolutely seen it otherwise i would have seen it a hundred percent I um. turned a star in the sky. Yeah. My mother said that there were there were parties of adventurers who came through here. 
<laughs> you see their tracks? Do you see any sign of people having come through here? I'm um, Earth yet. I can look. I'll look, I suppose. Sure. Uh, roll a um, survival check. You asked the wrong person. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, not bad. Not bad, though. <laughs> Teen. Yeah, this path is relatively well worn. You can see that there are signs of tracks um, heading up in that direction. Maybe a few tracks coming back the other way. Coming back. Like going back to the that camp. Coming back towards the hamlet. Yeah. All right. Um, I will relay the information. That's good, I suppose. It is most likely the people who live there. They say they visit the tree for answers too. We believe that though. I mean, I don't know much, but I feel like maybe this is a setup. I mean, they, <laughs> they said they knew we were coming. I mean, they literally had everything ready for us. I definitely oh, yeah. sensed something unnatural in that village. I couldn't tell what it was, I couldn't tell who it was centered around, but definitely unnatural. Let me ask. A star in the sky. When you were looking at the amount of tracks going to and going from, were they the same amount? No. Were they? No. <laughs> was no. it more going to more than going from? in more no. going, going in than more going back. in than back it sounds as though something does happen thing does happen when we go up to the tree and that will determine whether we come out of this quite all right or we could uh, pop back into our camp as though nothing had happened and maybe we find you know robbers or something taking our stuff I would prefer that, to be honest. To I this. That. I'm gonna have to agree with Balfier as well. All right. So, uh, the hills around you. Oh, oh, are you still? Sorry. Van, is there anything in the Van Richten book? Just really quick, so I had been looking. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so, We're good. um, you didn't really have time to properly look for it. Um, but it is a, the book as you remember it. Um, Van Richten professes that he is a traveller of the mist um, mm. and mostly talks about various adventures. He claims that there are hundreds, maybe thousands of these strange domains that the mists might sweep you up to. Um, you briefly glance through to see if you can find any kind of account um, of a place like this. Um, forest, strange villages, people talking in unison. Um, you find nothing that talks of that in particular. Um, there's a very big section um, uh, that talks about someone by the name of Strahd, but um, oh. there isn't. <laughs> yeah, really I had a feeling Strahd was going to pop up with word Van yeah, Richten. You yep, know. They knew that was coming. Yeah, this this Van Richten obviously got a massive crush on this Strahd person. Mm-hmm. It does. So who doesn't? Uh, because they <laughs> just talk Dante about Virgil. Um, <laughs> and you kind of get distracted by that, and then you're like, no, no, that's not what I'm looking for. No one by Strahd here. And then you just continue, and yeah, there's nothing that seems to. No one by the name of Lorinda is mentioned, as far as you can see. Olivier also has a crush on the sh- on Strahd in this story. Just purely that's... because of this. Yeah, that's canon that Olivia has a crush on Strahd. <laughs> Olivia, from Strahd. reading just these passages, is just totally in love. Um, yeah, and I think yeah. he gets into the Strahd stuff, forgets himself, then blushes and slams it shut and puts the book away immediately. Yeah, <laughs> and then we're we're good. Okay, so he doesn't know anything more. Just mists, mists, and just frog. mists. They, they and there's lots of these. I mean, so you could be in any one of these strange lands. Do you, okay. Um. Okay, so the hills around you uh, grow steeper and steeper as you walk. 
Um, they form kind of like craggy cliffs uh, either side of the path. Um, and the path begins to narrow between them until you're kind of all forced to walk pretty much in single file. Um, who has a passive perception of 12 or higher? Me. I do. Cool. Um, so, um, as you walk, the light is kind of odd. There's lots of weird things going on with the shadows. It's almost like there's movement, but it's not. It's just where the sun is um, sort of reflecting on these crags and it's creating really strange shadows um, around you. Um, you notice as you walk, all of you will see that little shelves have been carved into the cliff face. Um, and on them are tiny black painted eggs. Oh um, my god. They said they would leave eggs in our stead. There are only a few of them at first, um, but as you venture in, they become quite numerous. There's a lot of them and they're kind of carved into these uh, shelves that are just sort of sat there. Um, those of you with a passive perception of 12 or higher will also notice that there are words carved into the crags. Um, do any of you know Druidic? I think at least one of you does. Yes, two of you do. Uh, you can read. Um, it is obscured by sort of moss and has been damaged by sort of wear and tear over the years. Um, but it does read, leave the nest of life behind. Um, and it says that repeatedly you know like um all work no play makes jack a doll boy style uh just along the um cliff face written in druidic as a note i have eyes of the rune keeper so i can read all writing fantastic you yep yeah, you read it instantly it's all fine um and obviously our lovely partial druid can also read it um the rest of you you just see sort of strange symbols Unless anybody specifically asks, I'm not translating that because fuck that shit. <laughs> no. You know that Olivia is going to ask. He turns to both of you. What hey, does it say? She will. Uh, are they all translate? Um, also, I just. I forgot I took observance, so my passive perception is 15. Shit. I was like looking That's at my fine. perception. I'm like, no. Wait, I thought I took some. I, I think in Foundry, not every I've noticed not everything translates across. It's most of the mm -hmm. things, but uh, yeah, I think like passives, I did notice are not specifically written there. So do feel free to refer to D and D Beyond if that's um, a little bit easier. Uh, I, I was I hoping I got everything. I did. I did the whole shebang of it's importing so in, and I was really excited. It's wonderful. Oh, you know the thing that has annoyed me most is that everything comes across. But in the skills, athletics isn't there. What? Ooh. I don't know why. Like, it's just not sitting there. Oh. <laughs> it just starts with acrobatics. I just want to do it. investigation. Yeah. Next is there. Sports. Arcana, athletics. Maybe it doesn't want the DM to know <laughs> what your, all your <laughs> athletic scores are. That might be it. Um, but for me, it, it did not appear and I was very annoyed. Um, okay, well, that's fine. As long as you can all see it, that's it. Uh, okay, yes, so, uh, sorry, someone said they wanted to make a check of some kind. Um, I was saying out of character, but, like, I just want to eventually get to a point where it's like, we need investigation, like, passive pers investigation 20. Hide something. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> um, what, so you want to look at the eggs? Yeah, I want to, yeah. like, look closer at them. I'm not going to touch them or anything, and if I do want to touch them, I would use Mage Hand, but, um... I'm not going to touch them, I'm just like studying where they are, roll, like if there's any- Roll your investigation. And yeah, have a little look at- Uh, someone here has a little bit of sticky fingers. Oh. Mm-mm. Sticky paws, perhaps. Sticky paws. 15. Okay. Not the one you have to look out for, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. me. Um, 15. Um, you analyze the eggs. You're being cautious, all of you. You're all very on high alert. Um, they're black. Uh, almost, they look like they're rotten. You know, like when an egg goes rotten, it goes completely black. So that's what they kind of look like. Um, but they have very intricate um, painted lines 
all over them. Um, so they've been painted a bit like um, Easter eggs, I guess. Uh, the way that the lines and the um, kind of dots on them are positioned, the two dots kind of look like eyes. Um, but you can't be 100% sure. There doesn't appear to be any writing on the eggs. There's no magical runes or anything like that. Um, they are just... Uh, they are just... From what you can see, rotten eggs with paintings on them. These eggs have painting on them. They look like eyes a little bit. It's kind of weird. And they're all rotten. It just looks like lots of little faces watching you. I take way. one of my daggers and I'm gonna like like tap the top of it. Like try and maybe break one. Stop. Try and maybe break it. Yeah. Uh okay. Let's see. <laughs> Roll okay, so Let's you go. tap it and <laughs> it cracks a little, um, and the yolk kind of spills out over the side. Um, it is red, the yolk. Oh is my! The color of blood. Um, but other than that, nothing happens. Livia yes. is going to turn to Lazarina. Oh god. <laughs> Lazarina. Like, what is happening? Lady. Uh, if I may ask a question. Yes. Is this any kind of funeral, funeral rite that you've ever seen before in your life? Is this, is this reminiscent of, of anything? Uh, you, I know you have a, a, a deep connection with this death and such, so I thought you might, you might know. Um, can I make a religion? Absolutely, you can. Um, it, you know, it does have all the um, hallmarks of some kind of funeral, right? Uh, there is, obviously, it written in, what's written in Druidic is like a reference to death. Um, and you can quite easily imagine that perhaps these eggs do represent something to do with death. Um, a departed soul, maybe? Uh, but you aren't sure. You've never heard specifically of rotten eggs being left behind. And these eggs, they've got red yolk in them, and that's a bit odd. Um, that's not usual. Um, well, it does seem to be some kind of ritual or rite or um, that I would say is of death. But um, specifically, no, I can't give you any more than that. I, uh, I'm a bit worried why the yolks are red. <laughs> um, that is not anything I've seen before. Do you think these eggs may be power, some sort of ritual? Um, that, I'm not sure I can say. I can't tell. Because if they do, we could just break them all, knock them all off the shelf. I don't think that's a good I, idea. I would agree. It's, it's quite disrespectful to the dead. And at that, I think Olivier has like a Robin Hood style hat with a big feather. He's going to doff his hat out of respect. But I think he's, it's a, now that it's confirmed that's some kind of death ritual, I think Olivier is going to be a little more respectful towards the wall. Is there any uh, way we can fix the egg that was broken? Does anyone have a mending? No. Well, if, at the very least, Lazarina. it's only one of many. Lazarina, you notice as you're having this discussion and fixating over uh, the eggs, out of the corner of your eye, one of the eggs looks like it wobbles slightly. No. But then okay. you kind of look at it properly. It seems fine. There's no sign of any cracks or anything hatching or anything like that. Um, I'm just gonna say so this is what she'll do. Uh, I feel like maybe we should leave them, and I think that we need to move along quickly. I don't feel like uh, this is a place to stay for long. Agreed. Let's get this done. Probably best. I have money to mail to my kids. 
<laughs> Olivia is going to give a respectful bow to the wall of eggs, hop on, uh, and then give a little giddy up to Sir Elton and move on. How has Sir Elton been like, reacting to this? Like, yeah. Yeah, how has Sir Elton been reacting to eggs? So Elton and... Um... Sir Elton. Snuffled what? the eggs a little bit, like as you all stopped, kind of went up to one, snuffled it a little bit. Kind of, uh, you you would know uh, Barfo was a very like, Ugh, uh, kind of um, expression. <laughs> um, very disinterested immediately. And then um, kind of looked around and sees some very high cliffs. Um, as you all get ready to go again, um, you're about to hop on and you realize Sir Elton has left the basket behind and is attempting to climb up the cliffs. Um, uh, Sir Elton, as we all know, dreams of flight. Right. Um, and like any baby bird, feels that the best way to achieve such a thing is just to jump off a high place and see what happens. So Sir Elton's currently trying to make its way up these, uh, up these cliffs failing miserably because they're really not built for climbing but there are some shells so he's got a little bit of the way up is he um, climbing up the eggshells he's climbing yep a couple of them are cracked there's red oak uh, red uh, oak no. filling out elton elton my boy my sweet boy uh wee, wee. no 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 come down come down from there i will let you i will take you to the cliffs our favorite cliffs when we're done with this i promise you but I, Elton, please come down. He look. He looks at you, lets out a frustrated sigh, and starts to back it up, back it up down the <laughs> down the cliff. Slightly stumbles at the end and and falls, but shakes himself off and and just adds over to you. He's, he's fine. I'm going to grab his little face and I'm going to be like, oh, not here, not here, anywhere else, not here, not here. Okay, okay. Uh, we can fly when you get back. We, I promise you, we can fly when you get back. When we have I mean, a moment, I can, I can let you fly slightly. El Sir Elton. He remembers everyone <laughs> is here, and it's not just, just him. <laughs> not just him and Sir Elton, and he's like, Oh, y yes, quite. Yes, quite. You will be flying soon, Sir Elton. Just please, not now. Oh, no. Aka, I can cast levitate on. <laughs> yes, I feel like oh we do that a lot. Like lean oh, over God. to uh, Balfir, and I'm like, that pig will never fly. <laughs> <laughs> he may fly once, <laughs> but he never will again. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm just <laughs> challenging you both to a duel. <laughs> we're doing this. You can't hear us. I can't hear. Yeah, we're it, whispering. You sorry. <laughs> Do you ever say oh, out loud? Right. No, you would. You would have a glove thrown at you. <laughs> a very tiny I, glove. I would never say it where you could hear me, Olivia. I promise. Never. <laughs> never. You're my friend. I would never do that. It's very nice. You can gossip by my back, though. I think that's fine. All right. So that's what friends do. Eggs are. Eggs are cracked. Does this have any like? Some, some, some of them are the cracked. Wall? They're kind of been. Nothing seems to be happening as a result of that. Um, you've just got a, a few cracked eggs. Um, and um, the one that was already cracked from where you cracked it with a dagger. Um, but other than that, you see uh, Lazarina seeing as you saw earlier, one of them slightly move. You're kind of looking around to see if more of them move or if there's any reaction to mm -hmm. the eggs cracking, and there doesn't seem to be. Um, it's oddly still um, very unsettling. I right. think we should move forward. I agree. You're Yes. All right. Um, I I did in with everyone. How are we all feeling? Do we want a break or to stretch our legs? Because it's been a little while, hasn't it? Um, how do we feel? That'd be great. Ten yeah. minutes. Uh, shall we tag? Yeah, like just a ten minute go around, stretch our legs, maybe grab some yeah. water or a little snack or whatever. That'd be great. Um, be back in ten. Uh, who do I have to tag again? Juju, Juju, Juju. Oh. Hello, we are back, and um, I'm absolutely loving the um, uh, 
kind of summary of what's happened from Nikki in chat. Um, just like creepy eggs, red yolks. Sarah wants to fly. That pretty much sums it up. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Let's get right back into it. Um, so uh, you kind of continue on this uh, single file path. Uh, more eggs. Um, they're just everywhere at this point. There are tons and tons and tons of them. Um, and you finally kind of get to a point where the cliff sides beside you start to kind of decline down and meet back with a path. Um, yes, please, is that your hand up? Uh, no, I'm so sorry. Uh, my air conditioner made a really startling noise and I was just like, yes. Oh, we're boy, good. But this was just started. that's me. Sorry, that was me. I did that. Are um... you in my air conditioner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm everywhere. I'm omnipotent. That, that's the role of the DM. Um, <laughs> I've actually gone to all of your houses and installed little special effects just to really add to the atmosphere God. while you're all sleeping. I hope that's okay. I hope that wasn't crossing any lines. Good. <laughs> cool. um, <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, the path kind of declines. The cliffs beside you start to decline and meet back with the path again. Um, you've been kind of traveling uphill for quite some time. Uh, and you finally enter a rather imposing looking forest. Um, it's still daytime. The trees are kind of tall. Um, so the light, just like in the cliff area, um, shifts very strangely here because the, t- the trees are so tall, they're kind of blocking it out and casting odd shadows. Um, and as you continue through uh, falling into a sort of, you've been talking for quite some time this place is weird um you kind of fall into a complacent uneasy silence you're all very on your guard following the path um as you're instructed um as you continue you begin to hear a very distant sound of chanting nope it is very far at first um, and quiet um, but you approach as it grows louder um, and you get to a point where you can hear that it is coming from an area that is just off the path do you Um, want me to a clear clearing nearby no she said stick to the path can I make out anything that they're saying I mean Uh, or is it that distant um Passive perceptions uh, remind me again. Who has a passive perception above 14? I'm at 14. Yeah? Yeah? Um, cool. Those of you, that's quite a lot of you, really. Um, you can begin to make out words. A lot of you can't understand it. Um, but it but- is in Druidic. So those with you that have Druidic with passive perception above 14 um, that can understand to hear it. Um, you will be able to roughly hear that they are saying blood to root no. claim the fruit oh my god blood to root. okay blood to root what the fruit claim i don't understand so you're kind of stopped Druidic. you can continue to follow the path if you like um and just um oh. look around it or you can kind of investigate off and see um, see what's making the noise. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to strongly suggest. Go on, Olivier. <laughs> but maybe they, perhaps, but chance they have answers. We know where the answers are. It's at the tree. They well, that's what how the said one lady said, 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 said on the path. That would be my recommendation. That's- and you didn't trust her when she was speaking earlier. Why are you trusting her now? Because now, off the path, there is very scary chanting, and I have every reason to stay on the path. But do you, do you understand A what higher says? passive perception would also hear... It would sound almost like the sound of, like, breaking branches, like twigs snapping <laughs> as this chanting is happening. Um... Coming from the same distance, or is that closer? Coming from the same distance, yeah. Okay. Um, 
whatever it is that's making that sound is also making some movement. Um, but they don't seem to be coming towards you. I've made my thoughts clear. <laughs> I mean, what if they're... What if they're hot? I mean, what I know <laughs> of uh, religions and things like that, chanting usually indicates some kind of ritual. And maybe we should not interrupt. Oh. We know what they're saying. I do, yes. 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 Nothing that you need to know. (laughs) You know that just makes me more curious to want to go over there, right? I will tell you when we reach the tree. How about that? Let's follow the path and get where we're going, and then I'll tell you what you've missed. I think at that, Livia's getting a little frustrated um, at being handled. He's going to turn. Can I? Can we see through the trees at all? Of the path? Can we see what's you happening? Could, you the, could, um, you could, here? like, you could, if you wanted to, kind of wander over and and have a sort of peek beyond the tree line and see if you can see anything. Could you, you send your bird over to look? Ooh, idea. I could. Really good idea. Ooh, that's <laughs> a good one right um, I will go uh, flutter and then Swift will pop out of nowhere and land on my hand and be like, go, be nosy. And then I just send, send it off. And I just like, whoever is, check for me. whoever's next to me, I like hold on to their, put my hand on their shoulder so that I don't like lose my balance while I go into its eyes. I'm mm-hmm. definitely in the front of the, the line or group to some degree. Come on, why? <laughs> why? Oh, my no, passive is perception it? is 15, and I can't roll above a 4. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. No. Oh no! Um, your, uh, does your Swift uh, have a name? Uh, Flutter. <gasps> that's so cute. That's, that's really that's cute. That's the name of one of my D&D characters. Oh, nice. that hit me right in the fields. Uh, <laughs> and also, by the way, an, an air dynasty if it was a monk, but yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, uh, so Flutter um, kind of uh, uh, sort of wanders off, um, flies up in the air towards kind of this sort of clearing. Um, they circle it a little um, and they try to peek down. Um, and a wind sort of picks up um, and they kind of struggle against the wind a little bit. They make out movement, some kind, um, shapes, large shapes, uh, larger than a humanoid, perhaps, um, and not an awful lot else because at that point they collide with a tree branch. Um, are thrown slightly off course and then come sort of fluttering back, uh, feeling a little uh, bamboozled. Oh, it's okay. Nobody saw but me. It's okay. <laughs> I just like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a figure up there. Um, they would have seen a multiple, multiple of these m- shapes. Multiple figures, which we already knew because of the chanting. Unfortunately, a swift a flutter could not get close enough to see anything. They definitely did not have anything else happen. Don't ask any questions. Flutter would be embarrassed. <laughs> then we won't. Uh, my concern is that the 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 mother, be that as it may, uh, she specifically told us not to go off the path. There was a lot of uh, things said all at once. But did she say that to have us avoid seeing people who would uh, tell us the truth? I'm going to try that again. Uh, stealing people who tell us the truth? That's better. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's better. better. That's the Olivier we know. <laughs> Didn't know who you were playing then, but it wasn't Olivier. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was all in character. Let me try that again. <laughs> that was all in character. Why don't we... Maybe just one person goes off and comes back. 
five minutes. I think the last time we did that, someone like got knocked unconscious and we had to go find you them and I don't I'm not oh. pointing fingers it definitely was not me it was somebody else no, well me. last time we did <laughs> it was well, like like an hour ago I went in went, it was like hiding behind the building and then I got caught remember but you weren't going towards a noise also you're not you're not selling it you're not convincing us that it's a good idea when you remind us that the last time you tried it you failed just saying what I was off my game. Literally. There was a kid or something. Was that a practice run? Was a practice run. You know what, Star in the Sky? I, I think this, at least some kind of recon might be a good idea. I can't do it. I think we should keep going. I could make you invisible, that would help. Star in the Sky, what do you want to do? What do you think Star in the Sky would do? At this point, they've got. Some party member saying no, don't. Some party member yeah. saying yes, do. So it, it's kind of down to what you think they would do at this you point. Want, yeah. Um, I'm going to gonna say <laughs> he's not the type to take a lot of unnecessary risks, and this is a very unknown situation. So he'll stay if okay. we're voting no. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. And we're off. Okay. We go by the painting. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, so you um, leave uh, the strange chanting and the grove behind and you continue on your way. Um, You begin to notice as you travel down the path um, that um, Sir Elton is becoming more and more uncomfortable. um, they seem fine with with the carrying of the basket. It's not that they're getting tired necessarily. But they just keep putting the basket down, really sniffing what's inside, looking at you almost desperately at this point. Um, they are hungry. They want some food, and that's fruit. Um, oh. Smells really good. And torture. The rest of you. Um, are also beginning to notice some kind of good smell coming from that basket, which you haven't really noticed before. Um, it does smell good. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take the basket out of Sir Elton's mouth because that's going to be the best thing. Um, I'm fine, so I'm going to feed the rest of... I had some of the cake. I would like to give the cake to Sir Elton because that's... I feel fine. Like, I'm. Yeah, it's been long enough happened. at this point. I feed the cake to Sir Elton so he'll calm the fuck down. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to take the basket in my lap because it smells good. He said it wasn't for you. It's wrapped. As long as we don't eat it, it'll be fine. So, Olivia's going to peek inside the basket. He's not going to eat it. He's also okay. eating the cake. So, he's not. Are you attempting to do this? Without everyone knowing that you think it's another one, I I I think that he's just going to turn. He's going to say, "I think at this point, we are all quite curious." And to be honest, I trust Sir Elton's judgment. We'd like to look inside and see what we've been carrying this whole time. To be perfectly honest, it seems as though Sir Elton uh, has quite the nose for trouble. And I want to be sure that whatever we've been carrying isn't something to be scared of or aware of. Yes. Mm-hmm. Reasonable. Foolish. Uh, On your head be it. We're not going to eat it. Okay. So I've already eaten the cake. And I'm gonna I think... stand next mm-hmm. to uh, Olivier. You're going to stand next to Olivier. Mm-hmm. So you open up slowly the uh picnic blankets i guess i just I, for a second i was like tea towel i don't know this kind of cloth that's wrapped around um words and you um i'm a writer don't you know um as you open up um you kind of see this uh it, it was about as big as a melon and it kind of <laughs> reading the chat I, it kind of um it looks like a melon as well as you open it um it's that sort of shape um it is pink holy pink 
it is not any kind of fruit that you've seen before. Um, you and uh, Lazarina are kind of next to it. Where is everybody else at this point? Uh, probably about 10 feet this way. Yeah. Those of you that are like peering into the basket um, are hit by a very strong, delicious scent. It is, it literally smells like the meal that you miss most at this moment. Mm -hmm. And I would like you both to roll a wisdom saving throw, please. Of course, if I may, I ate truly just before during this campaign, or like, I, I didn't skip. He, he ate with Sir Elton. Is it okay if I roll with advantage for that? I did eat the things they gave us. The smell is quite overpowering. Okay. Um, Good so not it, It's not going to have an effect at this point. Um, and I would like you to roll for Sir Elton as well, please. <gasps> Sir Elton, no. How do I roll that um, on here? Um, that's an excellent question. Um... <laughs> I think you go more to where the chat is, and there's a little, is it a little dice icon here? Or oh, no, that's not it. Oh gosh, how do you roll on here? That's a roll, good question. and then I'm going to do Olivier first. Oh, God, his picture's oh. so bad. If you click Wisdom, it'll ask if you want to do a check or a save. Oh, okay, thank you. So it's a saving throw. Nice. Okay. Nice. Olivier, oh. no. <laughs> Baby, Olivier, that's what Olivier got. And then I'm going to do Sir Elton, who's worse than me. <laughs> this is an ability check. Hold on. Wisdom. There. It's a more interesting thing. Oh, dear. Okay. We're going at it. Oh, We're boy. Like, he's in a fucking pod. Listen, this, this is the most interesting choice. Don't punish me for this, but punish the two me. Two of you. <laughs> Don't, don't, oh, man. Okay, um, the two of you, uh, <laughs> you open up the box. <laughs> Not in my folk horror <laughs> one shot. <laughs> um, you open up the blanket and you're, you know, you have a moment to really gaze at this fruit and the smell hits you and it's gorgeous. And, and Lazarina, you have the same thing and it's really good. Um, and you kind of almost find yourself clutching, like at your, at your. I assume you probably have some kind of holy symbol or um, uh, your uh, yes. uh, spell component. And as you do, you are filled with a sense of calm. And instead of it smelling really good, it suddenly smells awful. Like you don't want to be anywhere near that. It is disgusting. It smells like rotting garbage left in the sun for Very years. Very smell. Uh-oh. Just gross. Um, yes. And you kind of oh, baby. step back and you are shocked as... We're a raccoon. A li- so a Olivia and Sir Elton, they are overcome with a, a compulsion to eat and they just go in. Like, no table manners. And you know... You know Olivia is very chivalrous, very polite. There would be table manners, but he is eating just like Sir Elton right now. The two of them are just chomping. I'm on gonna this try and fruit. pull pull one away. Grab, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try and grab the basket, and you can grab them. Can I? <laughs> I was gonna say, could I like try to grab the fruit with my mage hand? You can, yeah. Um, so um, just to be clear, they have both taken a bite of it. Um, mm-hmm. roll um, a uh, let's see roll a like a grapple check those that are grabbing at uh, person and pig and those <laughs> those of you rolling and, and you know use mage hand to take the fruit so are you grappling strange. against Olivier because I am a beast <laughs> yeah I am very hard to beat on this one okay We're unfortunately gonna do- yeah <laughs> okay because I am a brick wall Okay, so I'm doing strength saving or just strength check? Uh, it will be contested um, athletics. Oh, oh no. no, okay. <laughs> oh no, okay. It's not good. Oh, oh yeah! Alright! 
<laughs> oh, me with my oh, plus one. Oh, yeah. Wait, I, I will. That's absurd. I'm just so <laughs> distracted mm -hmm. by this. Olivier, and then I'll do the same. Elton. You've never known this to happen to you. Um, <laughs> we, we're yeah, so oh, strong. Okay, oh, God. fine. So there I feel is... like with those rolls, uh, what happens? You you are so desperate just to eat that you completely sort of lose all reason. Fight. Yeah. Just it's just reason to just eat and kind of at the same time, uh, star in the sky, Lazarina, they run forward, they grab at you, grab at the pig um, to get it back and uh, um, vapor, uh, mage hands, the fruit. The moment that the fruit is out of your sort of immediate vicinity, the compulsion leaves you. Um, but you have swallowed a piece of this uh. fruit and so has Sir Elton. Hmm. I make myself throw up. I would like you and Sir Elton to roll a d6 for me. Oh no. <laughs> How do I do that on here? I'm gonna find out together, folks. Um, okay. Um, slash uh, r1 d6, or slash r space 1 d6, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Slash r1 d6. Space 1 d6. Thank you. You know I didn't do that. <laughs> Mine, that's okay. going to be for me, and then here's Elton's. Beast. Okay. Like, nice work, but I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. I know, right? Okay. So, um, you all look at Olivia and Sir Elton. The horror of what's just happened hits you, Olivia, and what has happened to Sir Elton. And, and you know, your beloved pig is your most important thing, so... Right now, Anything you're fixating him, on that. I would die. <laughs> so I think Elton... I don't think Olivier cares about himself. I think he hops off the pig and grabs his face, and he's trying to like get him to throw it up. Like he doesn't care about himself. He's just trying to help Sir Elton. What you see is Sir Elton looks a bit confused. Um, confused that he, you know, he's a good pig. He does as he's told. He was told not to eat the fruit, and even though it smelled real good, he wasn't going to eat the fruit. But then suddenly he was eating the fruit, and that's confused him because he's well behaved and he so he seemed upset to have upset you and you have a moment of just watching and waiting for something to happen but beyond that confusion upset nothing seems to happen i think yeah Olivia's and you like breathe a little sigh tears, of like relief holding him like you're okay i love you you're okay i love you it's okay it's okay <laughs> you didn't mean you to speak, it's okay as you speak your lips begin to feel a little numb. And you speak, and as you sp you can't get the words out properly. Um, you can talk, you can think straight, okay, but they're numb, and it's almost like everything is really spicy, and your whole inside of your mouth, your throat, everything has gone numb. Um, <sighs> you can talk, but you do now have a um, disadvantage on all charisma checks for the next 24 hours. <laughs> um, as I'll you take it. find it difficult to find the words because this spiciness is just, this numbness is just overwhelming. You, you, can't, you can't make your tongue shape quite how it's supposed to shape uh, at times. And it kind of almost comes out as sort of like a, you're very unsure about what you're saying. Um, I'm trying to figure out what this does to the voice, and I think I know. Um, Olivier grabs oh his water flask, and he's just chugging water. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> That's exactly <gasps> like, it's literally yeah. so spicy. It's like you've eaten, like, hotter than a vindaloo. It's like, like a ghost pepper type situation oh here. my it's god yeah awful. his eyes are watering and he's just trying to drink and he like gets to the bottom of his water and he grabs sir elton's water offers it to sir elton and if sir elton refuses he just chugs the other water oh and with that i think um it's a good time for the party to kind of settle down maybe uh have a rest evening is drawing in um and you perhaps don't want to be traveling overnight um so feel free to kind of uh make um settle down if there's anything you want to kind of get through or, or talk about um 
Shall we make a plan as to what we prioritise in the morning? What have you done with the fruit, by the way? Back in the basket. That thing is slammed shut. That thing has yep. things piled on it. What do I have in my inventory? <laughs> Olivier has taken a rope and tied it around the basket to keep it closed. Olivier's like absolutely yep. not. Never again has taken two of his cross bolts and like pushed them into the basket to keep it like shut. <laughs> like, it is locked the fuck down. <laughs> okay, we'll watch I this happen with that. like I'm just I'm just watching you. I'm just watching you do it as an impassive uh expression on her face with just a tiny tiny glint of judgment in the eye <laughs> I, I feel um, like Olivier that... would absolutely feel that judgment but once you've finished I just kind of nod once approvingly as a uh, lover of shiny things I would like to um take out my little my long string that has just a couple bells on it and start tying it around the uh, camp. Love that. Fucking love that. I can easily okay. take a watch um, in the night. I have superior dark vision. Superior? Yeah. He says that part, but you would all know that uh, Vapor can see very well in the dark. 120 feet well and magical darkness. That's the best. Because fancy. Olivier can take a watch as well, um, but he has currently, because I don't think it's the first watch, has doffed his armor and donned his PJs. Um, yeah. I think I'll take yeah, like so the we'll do middle. Yeah, I also don't mind taking so two one hours minute. each. I yeah. have dark vision. Actually, I would sleep in my armor. Olivier would sleep in his armor. It's too scary. Too scary right now after what's happened. And he's going to have his <laughs> radiant sword. I don't think he, he's just like <laughs> ready. <laughs> oh, I have a sun sword, by the way. <laughs> I believe on that one. <laughs> okay. So, let's. Oh, before we go to bed, since we're yeah, sleeping, I, I will cast Levitate on Sir Ellen. So El he Sir Ellen deserves it. Let's get camp going. Um, can we say that the perimeter is like... I don't know how to do the clicky thing. Well, just like maybe five to ten feet around the camp and that's it and leave it open at the water since there's nothing to really tie it to. Sure. Uh, yeah, so show me... Uh, okay. So just kind of leave it at the water and then where, sorry? Um, that's not what I want to do. Uh, go around the, the... the... what are they called? Tents? Yeah. yeah. And then if this is a tree over in this corner, then end it there at the edge of the water. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. So it's just like this really immediate area going around the tents, and yeah, I don't think that the string yeah. would be much longer. It doesn't go that. very far out. Yeah. Yeah. Probably like five feet. So we'll at least have something of at least a warning in case someone. And it's like we'll say it's like at foot level, like like a like a like a tripwire kind of height. Sure. Sure. And it's got like little bells on it, hasn't it? Yeah, so it, okay. it might wake us up. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so who's taking first watch? I mean, I can, or if I don't mind. Or I can take one at night, so it doesn't matter to me. I don't think I do have dark vision, so I can go first if that's easier. Yeah. Okay. I think it might be smarter. <laughs> Alright, so we'll go Balfour and then Lazarina? Yeah. And then who's next? I can go next, because it'll be like at the middle of the night at that point. Where it's darkest from. Yeah, it'll be kind of early hours of the morning, yeah. And who is going last? Uh, me. That's fine. You can take it yeah. together if you want. Yeah. Alright. Uh, roll, um, so Darcy, roll perception for me. Oh, yeah. 
easy. Um, you sit. Uh, what are what are you doing? Oh, does your um, muted? I think I am muted. That's a good point. Um, <laughs> Balfour finds it hard to sit still, so she's more of a patrolling kind of watch. Mm-hmm. Um, and she um, hasn't come up much, but she keeps uh, a swarm of moths about her at all times. And so she will utilize them in her watch. She will send them off into the forest mm-hmm. and have them bring back, um, keeping an eye on them. She's keeping an eye on the camp and sending them out to kind of convey what is going on around them. Doing a lazy mm-hmm. circuit, maybe stop occasionally to listen, but moving on quite quickly. Sure. Uh, okay. And a couple of hours of watch goes by with no, nothing to be any more alarmed of other than some of the things that you've witnessed so far. Um, nothing strikes you as odd other than not there are some strange noises uh, that come from the forest odd animal sounds that you've never heard before you're not used to there's obviously some creatures that live here that you may have never seen but they're very far away very distant not something to be alarmed by if anything um, did come next. close, if I got the sense of any creatures approaching, I would try and reach out and communicate with them. But sure, if they're sure. not, if they're not even um, nothing to seems to be them. in it in your camp currently. Right. Uh, next up, we have Lazarina. If you could roll your perception check for me, yes. Seventeen. Seventeen. Also excellent. Um. Yeah. Very similar vibes. What is Lazarina doing? She isn't patrolling. She's definitely um, just sitting around the campfire and, you know, doing like the half, like a half meditation, half like talking to Norales, you know, just kind of like vibing by herself, like doing her best to make sure everyone's staying safe. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, And again, this two hours goes by little to no incident you hear the same thing you hear odd sounds strange wails moans even coming from the woods but nothing that seems to be coming closer that's the kind of thing i imagine you'd listen for like if you're listening for animal sounds listening to see if they get closer the same sound um and you hear nothing that seems to indicate that uh, i believe it was vapor next mm-hmm. Yeah. She would uh, sleepily so... attempt to flirt with Lazarina before they went to bed. But it's like probably not even that great. It's just like, what are you doing? She's like this. She's not putting like all her all into it. <laughs> Lazarina, like, I'm kind of horny, then... but like, yeah, I'm not she's that like, horny. okay, cool. I'm into this. This is cute. I'm really tired. <laughs> another time, another time. Uh, roll your perception check for me. Um, question: Can my familiar help by like doing oh, yes. a separate? I will say that you're, you know what? Why not? I'll say your familiar can give you advantage. Why not? Cool, awesome, fantastic, wonderful. I'm gonna need that probably. I I feel so sorry for you having used your familiar twice and rolled appallingly both times. So I'm gonna give you this. Happy <laughs> <laughs> there. Um, my perception is plus zero. It's just my passive that's good. So I'm like, I'm tempted to just be like reading something the entire time so I could just like half listen. Passively pass out. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you would know that. She would know that about herself that she does best when she's like not actually trying to perceive things. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's what she'll do, honestly, is like she'll just sit there and she's like, okay, co- cozy up and pull out a smut book that's at the bottom of her per- bag and start reading while swift is like on her head on her on their head just like keeping an eye out kind of but Mm -hmm. she's mostly uh just listening slash so your passive perception is 15 correct so would you rather just use your passive or would you rather make a roll yeah the likelihood is passive because the likelihood of me rolling 15 or higher is so much 
so slim. Hey, now, don't be so funny. I rolled a three and a four. Okay, fair enough. My luck isn't Uh, great right now. Might roll a five and a six. (laughs) And added together, it's still not higher than 50. Right. (laughs) Oh, that's fun. Um, Okay, so you use your your passive, you kind of get really involved in your book. Um, You like to, like, you know, go and keep watch, and it's really funny because you think that the entire party thinks that you're actively keeping watch, but they all know that you just sit and read and don't really pay that much attention. Um, but uh, yeah, you kind of half listen to everything happening around you, um, and as always, you get into the reading zone, um, and your senses seem to kind of pick up. Um, uh, at one point, you do hear a twig snap um, close by, which draws your attention. Um, Immediately, like looks up and like looks in that direction. Yep. Um, you have dark vision. 120 feet. What? <laughs> Devil's sight, warlock. What? <laughs> okay, 120 feet. Um, uh, that I will require you to uh, roll a perception check, though, as you peer into the trees. But I will allow you advantage because your familiar is sitting on your head. How about that? Hey, it's a 14. <laughs> hey. It's decent. That's awesome. Uh, okay. You squint into the tree line. And you wait. And there's nothing. I don't believe that. For- and nothing else happens for the rest of the night. Uh, or for the rest of those two hours, but it is now Star in the Sky's turn to have their watch. I will okay. nudge Star awake and be, and tell uh, him, be like, there was a twig that snapped in the middle of the night nearby, but I didn't see anything. I just heard it and then nothing else. And I point in the it direction. It did sound like a heavy branch, like a heavy branch snap, as if like weight would have to go on that to make that snap, but... Okay. Yeah, and I'll explain that, and I'll point where it came from, so that they know the general area. Okay, I'll take a look over in that direction, but I will be doing an active patrol. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go have okay. wonderful dreams. Good night. Roll a perception check for me, then. Okay. I'm also here. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Sir Elton is here as well. Okay, well, maybe you don't need me, but... He's gonna... While you patrol, I think... Olivier, I think they look where, like, you are no longer. So, like, if someone's waiting for you to patrol around, they look where you just were, so that... If so you're, wa- you're waking behind up, you. is what you're saying, uh, Olivier. Yeah, we have watched together, Star mm-hmm. in the Sky and Olivier. Yeah, okay, time. sorry, I didn't catch that earlier. Yeah, um, okay. Had I have caught that earlier, I would have done things in a slightly different order. Um, oh, so oh, sorry. Do you want me to no, just no, be asleep? Okay, I can. Fine. Um, so no, we're 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 still on the cusp. We're okay. Um, so vapor, you kind of are handing over watch to uh, Star in the Sky, and you um, both look over towards Olivier to uh, start thinking about um, waking him as well because he had expressed that he wanted to be up for this final two hours of watch um and you notice he's kind of um sleeping a little bit uh restlessly um olivier you settled down in bed very alarmed very alarmed at the fact that you'd eaten this fruit that such a compulsion had uh taken over you um and you fell asleep and you begin to dream uh you dream that you are stood in the middle of a grove. There is chanting all around you. Blood to root, claim the fruit. But you can also hear whispers that sound like, sound like the villagers, all in unison. The fruit is not for you. This continues for quite some time. 
and you kind of glance around, mist clings to the air. You see next to you Sir Elton, but the rest of your party members are nowhere to be seen. Sir Elton also looks very confused. Almost as if he too may be asleep and sharing the same dream. He has to be, because in my dream, Sir Elton can always fly. <laughs> so this He's is not, not flying right now. Again. This is yeah, very this much is not Sir normal. Elton that you know, looking um, very terrified. Um, um, and he's looking to you for guidance. Um, as you sit, a strange sort of uh, orange light pervades the area. There are trees all around you, um, but it sort of glows, but it casts this weird orange glow over everything. And the voices become louder. The fruit, the fruit was not for you. And you start to feel your stomach cramping. Oh, it hurts so oh. bad. And you're... You, there's something stuck in your throat. You begin to cough. You're coughing <laughs> and coughing. And you cough out a piece of this fruit. Except it's weird looking. It's It doesn't look like fruit anymore. It looks fleshier and there are teeth <laughs> you feel some of your teeth are missing but some of the teeth in your claws right now don't look like your teeth the chanting stops suddenly and you hear a small voice in the distance the fruit it may be round and sweet but be wary when you eat you'd better learn to run the hollow man comes and in the distance, in the tree line, you can see a figure. It's humanoid, it's holding some kind of long, sharp sickle. The whole place lights up, and then you, you jolt awake, just as your compatriots are coming to check on you. Elton, Sir Elton jolts awake at the same time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? I don't want the hollow man to come. I'm sorry. Who is the hollow man? <laughs> what did you do? At this point, you're all kind of walking, waking up. <laughs> Olivia's screaming. Olivia's yelling quite loudly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I check my teeth. Are they all still there? Your teeth are all still there. What's wrong, Olivia? Um, I think Olivia stands up and, and runs to the edge of camp and tries to make himself throw up. As you do that, you kind of run towards the edge of camp. I'm, like, feel pushing free everyone away. I'm, like, not even looking. I'm just running. Put roughly where you all are. Um, oh, no. Star in the sky. This is making you hear the bell of your alarm spell go off, and you can sense exactly where it came from. And you see a shadow. I would like you all to roll initiative. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Up. Where is initiative in Foundry? Very good. Right. Right. I think I have to create an encounter. Oh, I found it. Oh, perfect. Oh, oh look shit, at that. Olivier is throwing up. Olivier whips around because fighting is what <laughs> Olivier knows. Neighbor. Okay. Finally, he gets to do something that's good. 
Oh, that was so good. That was so good, Kat. I'm scared. That was so fucking good. I don't like the Hollow Man. I like the Hollow Man. <laughs> 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 you see her like the Hollow Man? Oh, that's awful. Do you see it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Steps out. Swinging its side. I need to figure out how to. Why do I roll initiative? Oh, I don't like him. He's a bad man. That's the bad <laughs> man. <laughs> Of the combat to that it. Um. Oh. Did you see what <laughs> I was <wrong>? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can't fight all Olivier and Boy, feel good I'm about ready it. For this. Uh, okay, so, uh, cool. Um, I'm gonna just say, like, um, uh, mounted combat always has this anyway, so Sir Elton is on your initiative count. Um, Olivier, just to make things easier. Um, you know as well, I guess, that can only uh, dash, disengage, and do something else. So I can't remember yeah. what that is. It's dash, disengage, and... Dodge. Have... Yeah, dodge. So I have a special... Um... I also have a special feat that I can do, but right. that's... Yeah, so it's like I can charge. Then if I yeah. run back, I can, like, lance someone, like, st- we'll see it happen in real time, because he's far away. Um, yeah, that's fine. All right. It's been, I've, like, never, ever run a D&D session with mounted combat, so you'll have to forgive me if I don't 100% okay. understand I've never what's going on. I'm going to rely before. on you to tell me the truth. <laughs> it's not good, because like, this is my first yeah, time playing so a I cavalier. Cast three spells, take four actions in a turn, that's what mounted combat is, and I'll be like, oh, okay, cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Um, just in case. Well, I wish that you could like lock these together, boar and uh, boar and cobalt. I love I love that Sir Elton has made it into the water. Um, Elton is well, he's like probably following me. I just he's attached to my character in the uh, sure. forge, yeah, so I can't move him. Yeah, I have mounted combat rules up on another screen too, so just in case. Okay. So, okay, I think we're ready. All right, so, uh, Balthier, you get to go first. I rolled an eight. I rolled my first. Would be Vapor. Uh, it's not what it... Oh, I was looking at the wrong screen. I apologize. <laughs> uh, vapor. Vapor. I was looking just at the list of actors and I was like, there wow, everyone rolled initiative in alphabetical order. order. That's so <laughs> organized of you. Um, <laughs> Vapor, you get to go first. I apologize. Uh, yes. Okay. Um... You see this creature is coming out from the tree line. Uh, alarm bells are ringing. I know that the alarm bell didn't quite extend out there, but, uh, you know, mm. we're using, we're doing it now. Um, Vapor will be asked, is that the hollow, the hollow man, the one you were speaking of? Olivier's you... back is turned, Olivia. It looks very up. similar to the shadow that you saw, Olivia, yeah, it's, it's yeah, this Olivia's great just, big like, nodding thing. Uh, Olivia like, eight foot like, tall, got a scythe, that pretty much matches the description, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, then I don't feel bad about this, as she lifts her hand up and, and just says to her patron, can you just give a little helping hand? And a giant ball of flame will appear in her hand. She doesn't even care that she's in a fi- in a forest as she chucks yeah. fireball directly at the holiday. Oh my god. Yeah! Oh my I mean, god. Oh. Uh, yes. It's the only chance she's going to get that nobody's around. <laughs> You're so right. This is so true. <laughs> so dexterity uh, saving throw, please. Uh, DC 15. Yeah. And they get to roll this dexterity saving throw with advantage. Uh, of course they do. I don't think that's of true. Course. They do. They, I, I mean, whether it's true or not, I'm the DM, so they do. Oh, damn um, it. All right, let me roll. Still, they rolled like absolute poop, so the highest is a uh, 13. Nope, 15 is the DC. It's the DC. Okay, roll your damage. Uh, oh, it's gonna hurt. Does that do oh, it? Yeah, let me put some better music on for the, for the mood, actually. 
There we go. 29 fire damage. Damage. So 29, giant, you say? Yes, this giant uh, okay. fireball around the edges looks like smoke, um, where her air is like adding to it. And then it just turns into this as it shoots out of her hand it's, it starts with like a ball about the size of a softball and then expands to the full 20 mm-hmm. foot radius sphere all right well uh 29 you say mm-hmm. it screeches as it is hit um looking at it i don't know if you can all see this very well uh but looking at it it is this really tall imposing figure it's got this massive scythe and the only sign of anything other than like wicker or wood uh, which is what it seems to mostly be made out of is this really odd white shape it actually looks kind of similar to what the uh fruit was wrapped in um and it was attached to uh where there would be a head um and it's been kind of like slapped on with ropes um it had just kind of looked impassive but um i think the best way of describing is it it now looks like a head um if you put a sheet over your head how that looks with the imprints and everything like that um and this kind of like circle appears on it as it screams as it screams it sounds like a child um it takes double 29 damage because it is vulnerable to fire damage um, and you would Good all notice this the fire damage just yeah. obliterates it uh so that is oh that is gonna be 58 points of am i mathing right that's good math 58 points of math. Math. 58 points of math oh, <laughs> nice <laughs> Eight points of fire damage Oh boy. Paper uh, looks way too pleased with herself. <laughs> 58. Thank God I can get a calculator up quick. Oh boy. Yeah, you have pretty much. Like, this is. It already looks like it's on its last legs. Okay. Like, <laughs> I don't think it's going to even get to you guys. Like, you have just destroyed most of this. You ruined my oh. encounter. <laughs> no, I'm good with it. I'm good. No, no. It. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Sorry, um, the next hit I love that you have done that. Uh, also, I love that you drew this thing and great. Um, it was part of uh, it's part of Foundry. It did it for me. It just let me. I will point say as exactly. well that you have set this tent on fire in the process. Ah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah, I kind of assumed Some of the that the trees it, in the, the back. Have you just started yeah. a forest fire? No, I'm not going to be that mean. But they kind of do like light the fire. Oddly, oddly, they don't catch other trees. They just kind of go, and then that tree is just disintegrated into ash. Um, okay. It's almost like the fire kind of goes, and then it's gone. Uh, but um, okay. yeah, uh, it is down quite a lot. Is this updating? Or yeah, it is updating. Great. Uh, okay. Who is next? I made these encounters too easy. Um, Olivier. Thanks. So Olivier is kind of a bumbling buffoon most of the time, like 90% of the time. When it comes to combat, this is the reason why he's been able to survive so long and why he it feels justified to be a little bit buffoon. Um, he is going to down on top of, he checks in with Sir Elton. He, like, looks down, like, it's it's fucking go-go pow- Power Ranger time. Like, look at Elton. Elton look back, like, let's go. Da, 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 da. He's gonna hop on. Slides on, so that's going to be to mount his half a movement. And then he's going to slowly turn Sir Elton around and take out the mm-hmm. sun sword. And so almost as if radiant light slices up through the darkness, illuminating his features, and they are intent, almost as if he's gone to another place. Like, he's more confident, and he's pissed. The fear is gone, and he's there's, like, a fear behind it, but there's also, like, a, de- a determination and intensity. And he's going to... How far away is this guy? 
Uh, I think with uh, Elton dashing, I think you could get there for sure. Yeah, you can get there. Yeah, but would I be giving up my action if Elton dashes? No. Yeah. Elton, so Elton's. Yeah. Elton. Elton um, has their own. They can either. They, it's their own okay. thing. Um, so it kind of melds with your go. That's how I'm going to run it anyway, because you know it's, it's better that way. I think he doesn't even say a word. He just kicks Elton a little bit, like an urge. It's not harmful. It's just like a turn, and Elton charges, and he's going to <laughs> shoot past everybody, and he is going to go right up to this fucking thing. Elton, okay, no, the I moment lost you, you enter it. The moment you enter five foot range, um, you do provoke uh, opportunity attack from it uh um, so, yeah yeah it's it's one of its things that it can do i, I got this monster from uh, it's a cool oh, yeah. monster by the way um but yeah, so I want to do by being, and what you would notice because you're very intensely fixated on you is throughout this whole thing it's almost like um it would have seen like it Vapor getting the fireball ready was quite a, a lengthy thing, but it has been fixated on you and Sir Elton this whole time. It is almost ignoring everyone else in the party. Yeah. You know in your heart that the reason why this thing is here is because yeah. you've eaten a bit of that fruit. It is after you, it wants you, and it will be... If you died, like it would be done. It, like That's its goal. Yeah. You can feel that. Um, and it immediately, it's almost like it's, you know, happy that you're coming towards it, that you you are the one it wants. Um, so it will...
Well, I just summon it and put it next to one because I can't attack with it this turn. Mm-hmm. Okay, no worry. Uh, okay, is the trees go? Uh, tree is going to. This is fine. This is fine. Uh, okay. Um, star in the sky. Roll a wisdom save for me, please. Roll. Ro. All right. Wisdom save. Oh no. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> oh lord. P-P-K. Okay, P-P-K. you are affected by. So, uh, infusion spell, essentially. Um... Okay, so we. So you can no longer. Um, take reactions and I'm going to get you to roll a d10 at the start of each of your turns from here on out while you're gotcha. affected by it um, and it will also take a swing because why not um, so while it's doing that who's going to take a swing at who else is here oh. uh, it will take a swing at you as well uh, star in the sky because okay. you are up Pop and it doesn't like you know being climbed all over. Yeah. Uh, so that is seventeen to hit. Uh, makes it. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. You said I don't get reactions. You don't get reactions. Damn it. Okay. It's taken out your reactions. Which I know is horrible uh-huh. for a rogue. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> that is thirteen points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, it could be worse. Um, and you are also now grappled. Uh, is it magic grappling? No, it's kind of slammed into you with its branch, and it's just holding you there. Okay. I have Okay, uh, that's that. The swarms will. I'm going to just roll for all of them to take attacks and see how many you do. So, it's four of them. Uh, number. Yeah, so. So, uh, swarm that is closest to uh, Balfina that <gasps> hit uh, that. Uh, did I say it wrong? Yeah, Balfina. Fine. Yeah. Balfina. Sorry, I did. I did. I, I kind of combined Ship. it with uh, Lazarina. That's cool. That's uh, cool. The two of you. Um, uh, Sixteen to hit. Balfina. Uh, hits. Yeah. Okay. Um. Then the second swarm is also close to you. Uh, mm-hmm. That is a 12 to hit. Misses. Hit. Okay, so only one of them hits. Then that one's an 8, so uh, that was going to be the one that was going to come over here and kind of get all up in your grill. Um, I'm going to put it next to you so you can still see your encounter, but it is like on your space, Lazarina, um, as is this one that hit you, uh, right. Balfir. So this one that I just put there. Um is in your space um crawling all over you it's kind of gross uh this one that's kind of hurt is going to or that will head towards balfa as well because balfa is closest um that is a 14 to hit uh yeah that's a hit okay uh so i will roll two lots of damage for you uh 
11 points and 8 points, so 19 points of damage altogether. That's fine. Oh, That's no. Fine. Wait, wait. The 8 is halved because it's got less than half its hit points, so... 11 plus 4, so 15, sorry. 15, 15. points That's damage. fine. Oh. That's fine. That's it's all fine. Um, all right. Um, and that's all of their goes, so we are back to the top of the round. Um, I think something so should have happened there, but it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> there's something in the uh, Discord chat for you, but on my ah. turn, I'm going to have my familiar rush or fly up to the tree, or to one Sorry. of the heads, and cast Shocking Grasp through it. Nice. Like, I want a fireball, but like, I also don't want to hit my allies. Uh, well, you can do, you can kind of aim your fireball. I think you can aim your fireball if you, where are you? You're hot, quite far back here. If you use your movement to get a little bit closer, I think you could probably aim your fireball towards the back of the tree. And how many hit anyone. six heads left? Six. Uh, yes. Okay. It's five. Five. No, six. Six. There is six. All right. To make it faster, then yeah, I'll do. I'll do fireball. Even though I just rolled a nineteen to do shocking grass, but I'll yeah, I'll do fireball again. But I'll aim it so it doesn't hit a uh, star in the sky and any of my other allies, and try to yeah, hit yes, as many any sense. things possible. All right. I'm rolling a deck save. Correct. Yes. Oh, I rolled a natural one and I feel like I should reward a natural one uh, so uh, roll your damage um, and I will say that you take out all but one head I don't know how to oh never mind hold on so I did not long rest on this thing, so it's saying I can't cast it, but I know I have two spells left because I got my spell slot back. Fine, but, I, um, I, I believe you. <laughs> so I'm just going to do uh, 16d8. 16. Go for it. Betty 2! Boom! Straight on the tree, yeah? 52! Yes. Oh, shit. So she's okay. like, this is taking too long. I want to go home and flirt with people, damn it. And she shoots up the fireball. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, so you incinerate all but one head. And this tree um, screams. Um, as all the heads melt away, there's just one head left. Um and unlike last time where you were kind of surprised it's a tree right it should go up in flames but it kind of seemed to knock the effect off a little bit or it withstand it better than you expected it to um this time it just fully lights up like oh, the sky yeah. is already orange but you have just set this tree entirely on fire um star in the sky barely makes it off the branch uh, still completely confused um, as to what's going on trying to withstand this magical effect um, and Star and Sky as you kind of fall to the ground that magical fog in your brain disappears Nice. Um, Vapor tell me how you want this thing to die So as the flame grows and grows and grows and it starts to change from all of the different shades of fire as um, mm -hmm. air, she pushes air into the flames to make it stronger and she shoots it directly at the center point where all the heads are and it strikes true and she just winks at the tree as the tree just melts all of the heads <laughs> and they just start falling. Um, and she, uh, when the tree screams, she's like, I have that effect on people. <laughs> I love that. Um, it goes up. Uh, everyone that 
combat is over um, and as it kind of dissipates this fire and, and the tree is you know dead the single head that was left drops onto the ground um, its eyes are wide its tongue lolling its mouth open and then it rolls to look at you and it says mother knows who you are mother will find you and then the ground shifts and the fogs start to seep in um once again you are immersed in this thick white mist and you can't see each other you have no idea where you are and it seems like an eternity and then the fog once again dissipates and you are back at your camp in your domain your tent that you love is there um and you have made it to the end of this one shot uh so well done you no tpk um next time i will make it harder (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um, but uh hopefully you all enjoyed that and hopefully uh everyone watching thank you so much for watching and sticking this out with us i know it was a little bit of a a long one a little bit longer maybe than we thought it was going to be um i over prepared it's a it's a floor of mine um and yeah uh i i'm so happy to have got to play with you all i'm gonna just really quickly like get to just sweep round one more time everyone can kind of say who they are what they're doing if i can kind of try to make it on the quick side because darcy really has to go um as i'm sure the rest of you would like to go as well um and um yeah and then i'll come back and i'll say a couple of bits and then we shall end the stream so uh let's go with darcy first and so darcy oh, let me double check that out. No, we'll stick around. Darcy needs to. Hi, I, me, JC Darcy, uh, JC Darcy underscore. Come find me on Twitter where I talk too much about things that I care about and also being very tired. You can find me here again tomorrow morning, uh, American time, tomorrow afternoon, UK time. I will be playing, we will not be playing Lancer. It is confirmed. We will be playing a little indie game by somebody rad, which also includes Max. So definitely come check that out. And find me on, hey. on Wednesday <laughs> playing Lancer because I love Max. Thank you so much, Kat. This was so, so much fun. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, cool. And um, if you need to hop off, Darcy, that oh, is yes, absolutely you. fine. I don't know what that will do, but um, yeah, uh, Fleet. Hi, I'm Fleet. You can find me at Fleet underscore Dietrich on Twitter. You can also find me as that on Itch. Uh, you can download my newest game, Beats and Max. I post my weekly streaming uh, channel. And oh my God, an indie indie Max indie mech game about bees right. who could right. i think what? you'll see uh bees and max play tomorrow i'm gonna guess uh <laughs> which is exciting so please go see that stream because that's my child but uh yeah thank you all so much for tuning in i met olivier and a little bit elton uh find me find me on el gore's internet all right let's go with nikki next Hi, Nikki. You can find me at Beholder to No One um, or Producing Chaotic Wonderful. Um, I can also be found a lot of times on Weep the Tale and a bunch of other places. I'm here a lot. But um, tonight, if you want, uh, in like 30 minutes, I'm going to be playing an NPC on Heroes and Hooligans um, (laughs) as a reoccurring NPC. So you should come check it out. But uh, it's a secret. The players don't know. So shh. Yeah, don't let them know now. Yeah. Also, Thirsty Story Lesbians next Wednesday on GM Hina's at 6 p.m. Um, raising money for, uh, I believe, Planned Parenthood and another charity stream starting on the Friday at 9 p.m. We're raising money for Planned Parenthood as well. I think abortion rights tomorrow, next Wednesday, and then Planned Parenthood on the or on the 29th. All right, got it. Um, Lee, star in the sky. Let's go. Hi, um, I'm Lee. You can find me at, at Ghost Brunch on all platforms, pretty much, except for Instagram. That is a tattoo artist, and she's pretty cool. Um, yep, so I'm pretty much here, elite, mostly on Saturdays, but since uh, our, we're taking a little break, a uh, little hiatus for that, so I probably won't be on too much until we get back to that. Um, it was really cool playing with all of you. Thanks for DMing. Thanks for playing. It was awesome. Oh. 
It was really, really fun. Uh, I had so much fun with it. I was so glad I got, like, this is a really amazing cast. Um, Holly, you are up next. Yes. Uh, I am at OMG Holly D on Twitter. Follow me. I'm not great at Twitter, but I do enjoy it. <laughs> um, uh, other than that, you will probably catch me here next uh, Saturday in the evening, I do believe, will be the next time that I play. Um, and this Monday on Brambleberry Games, I will be playing Helia, who is a superhero with index card RPG. It is a really good time. It's like D&D extra light rules. So uh, jump over there if you can on Monday. I'd really appreciate it. And that's it for me. All right. Um, cool. That leaves me. Uh, I am Kat, otherwise known as I, I always try to forget myself. So, like, um, always known as Law Mistress ninety three. Um, you can find me on Twitter. Um, you can find me sometimes on streams. It seems. Um, I will be streaming next Sunday with the beginning of my Mythic Odysseys of Theros campaign. Hopefully, my time management will be slightly better. Um, <laughs> don't put too much in. That's the takeaway from today. Um, and um, yeah, it's going to be really, really fun. It's going to be on Girls Run These Worlds um, or at Girls Run Worlds on Twitter. Um, check them out. They stream loads of really, really, really great stuff, really great content, uh, as does here at the Lost Caravan. Um, just a reminder that. August casting call for here the Lost Caravan is coming out this weekend um, so keep an eye out for that if you want to play in any of these really cool um, games that are kind of coming out um, and tonight 6pm mountain, uh, mountain yeah mountain time um, there's going to be a cult one shot uh, DM'd by Dave um, Frozen Depths of Our Souls it's called and I believe it is more horror so uh, it's a horror so filled terrifying. Saturday today um, it's going to be terrible mm -hmm. um, and that is kind of it from us I think um, Darcy you better scoot on out of here and uh, One last thing. lovely to be with you all we should absolutely shout out Cassie Mothman who wrote Walk Rook and Roots oh. Oh yeah! Yes! <laughs> oh my goodness! Shout out to Cassie Wolfman who wrote What Crooked Roots. Most of the encounters that I got in this are pulled from that. I've pulled some stuff from Kobold's Press uh, Tales of Margrave as well, um, and some Domain of Dread stuff. I kind of mixed it all up together in a big uh, soupy bowl, um, mm. but uh, mostly inspired by What Crooked Roots by Cassie Wolfman, and uh, hopefully she gets to watch the vod and enjoys it. Um, and doesn't come in my DMs like, what have you done? Um, but yeah, cool. Uh, I think that is us. Uh, so we are ready to stop streaming.